Okay, this is getting silly. Sorry. Um... I keep having the remote control set up, and then it keeps going away. There we go. So, I'll be on camera in a minute, and hope, oh wait. And hopefully the audio delay is working, but we'll have to see. Pardon me while I fix this to make sure it works. Okay. Urf. No, that is not right. There's the remote control. Okay. Hey, Al. Sorry, that was weird. Uh, extra negative, because I can't see chat. That seems like an issue. Uh, why is there not an option for I need to see my own goddamn chat? Oh, this is a super well-designed app, isn't it? Oh, Lord. <sighs> well, hey, all. How are you doing? While well, I walk around being an idiot trying to find a way to be able to see chat. <clears throat> like, there's Stark in chat. Where the f... Here we go. <sighs> nope, this will not work. Because Haley's iPad is dead. Screw me and my desire to be able to see what people are saying. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. It's extra confusing, because this is also me using this as an excuse to test out our new lapel mic, which I may or may not have tested a little bit ahead of time. Because um, it turns out I do actually really like the audio output it's doing. Perf. But, yeah. Not helpful if I can't actually see chat, honestly. This computer's dead. What the hell? I just got sick and tired of not being streaming, so I wanted to start, and apparently I started before I was completely ready. Come on, computer, get power. Okay, I can tell that was a raid or a host, and I can't see what it was because chat! That was Stark. Thank you very much for the host, friend. Okay. How's the audio on this? Because there's supposed to be a delay. There's supposed to be delay on what you're getting from the mic because the camera is like, it's not a full second, it's like a second and a quarter. Uh, s slower than a direct connection one. He says, knowing full well that you can't actually respond immediately, shut up. Um, but, like it says in the thing, we're doing butternut squash soup because I fucking love butternut squash soup and I just haven't had it in a while. And I decided that I wanted to make it and this is my excuse. The other stuff that we're making is mostly just because if you're making butternut squash soup, why not make stuff to go along with it? So I think you might be able to hear this through the lapel. I've got uh, things of beef. I think we decided they're bottom round steaks because I can't honestly remember what they were when I bought them. But we parceled them out and I've got some of them uh, thawing because they've been in the freezer since Valentine's Day. Yeah, because it's what I used to make the steak up of for Haley. And she keeps hiding my gloves. Because I know where she's got her gloves in here that fit her hands, but not mine. Because mine are behind the camera, so I'm... Oh, God. I have two gloves left. Okay. Well, that's unexpected and unhelpful. really like this computer to finish 
opening so that I can see chat without having to walk over there to Haley's computer or mine. I should not put these on ahead of time. So the reason why I wanted gloves for this is because if you haven't worked with the butternut squash, they're very sticky. Like, the outside is fine, but as soon as you get to the insides, it's just very sticky. And I don't super want to try and get that off my hands, because it doesn't come off well. <sighs> this casual playthrough day. I mean, look, we haven't started cooking yet. I'm sticking with the casual playthrough. Shut up. Maybe when this computer finishes... Oh god, it's doing a Windows 10 update. No wonder. It's never going to open. I'm trapped here forever now. Um, I guess while we're waiting, I can throw you over to the cooktop cam because I did some finagling with this. One, so that the camera is less loose, and two, so that hopefully you can see into the pot. I'm looking over at the other camera. So you can see into the pot better, but we'll have to test that and find out. I will still say I do legitimately enjoy that I can do camera switching from my iPad. It's so nice. I, I wish I could see what I was switching to. <laughs> But there's only so much I can do. Yeah. It's, it's still doing a Windows update. It's been at 100% since I came into this room. Yeah. God, I love Windows 10, don't you? Ay, ay, ay. Um, so I did type up all the recipes for this um, ahead of time. So if you want them, you can just do exclamation point recipe. Um, the one warning I will give you is that the beef thing is not a recipe because it's just, I have beef short round. We should figure out what to do with that. I don't know what. Because I was thinking mushroom soup. Don't super want to do beef au poivre again because I need cream. And technically you're supposed to do it with cognac, but I did it with whiskey, and I think I used all our whiskey. So fucking good, though. Um, so yeah, I'm still trying to figure out what to do with it. There are, like, rounds that are... Ah, yes, the distance makes this fucking meaningless. There are, like, the rounds that are the base of a butternut squash. Yeah, yeah, butternut squash in size. I've got two of them, so I'm thinking of, like, cut them into strips and do stuff like that. I just don't know. But it's meat, which... Uh, it's gonna be the last thing we do, and since I'm sick and tired of waiting for this window, uh, Windows update, I'm just gonna say fuck it and start, and look over at chat on the computer. Floratron, Damasu, bad at this game, recipe, <laughs> S-ranked lunch. Uh, okay. Gotta love those wonderful HP machines that apparently take even longer to do Windows updates. How is this sound, by the way? Because I imagine this might actually be atrociously awful. And worst case, I can turn off the lapel mic while I'm doing the... doing this. Which, hey, if you own knives, this is something that you should do every single time before you use a knife. This is a honing steel. This does not sharpen your knife at all. What it does is make sure that your knife doesn't go too far out of true, which is the state where you actually want it to be. So what you're trying to do, and let me see if I can just walk right up to the camera for this, is if you're crazy and want to do this with a protractor, you hold your knife at about a 20 degree angle to the steel and just bring it down. Although, for safety's sake, you should probably do it that way. Um, basically, all that's doing is... Um, removing imperfections that you get on your knife from just casual use. It will not sharpen your knife, but it'll keep it from getting dull over longer periods of time. Eh, yeah. The other thing is, you always want to make sure that you do it an even number of times on both sides. So usually, I don't know why it's a thing for cooks to do, is that they do five on one, five on the other, then four, then three, then two, then one. I just usually do five at a time. And then, just to be safe, you may or may not want to run water over either of these, or both of these, because they will both have very small uh, metal fragments. It's less important on the steel, because it can actually still help. 
keeping other things in true, but on the knife it's important so that you don't accidentally get little, little tiny near microscopic shards of metal in things. Oh my god, it's, it's now gone from 100% to 15%, so that's fun. I meant to grab, like, a trash bowl. That was silly of me. I mean, I suppose I could be smart and just go grab our weird automated trash can, but it's not actually that empty. <laughs> Thank you, strange automated trash can demon. Pardon me while I pop over to read chat again, since I can't fucking see it! It's not the worst sound you've ever heard. Well, that's a high bar. I will try not to do that anymore on stream. I don't think I actually should need to, but still. Ay, ay, ay. Now comes the less fun part, which is just skinning the stupid squash, because... Like a lot of fruit, because I believe technically squashes are classified as fruit, not vegetables, but nutrient-wise they're vegetables, so fuck it, who cares? Um, they are covered in a very thin skin and then do like a pithy sort of thing underneath. In our case, we don't super care about getting this pithy bit off. Like, it's not, it's not the same as like a citrus pith where it's just this shit is awful and is used to scare away like, I don't know. I don't actually remember what the hell pith is used for, because I don't think it's used for fucking anything. This is also the part that's sticky. Ergo, why I'm wearing goddamn gloves, because I don't want it sticking to my hands, because it doesn't come off with soap. I'm trying to remember what does bring it off, but it's not soap. This probably would have been easier had I cut it in half, but whatever, that's what we're doing. I've got time to kill. I'm mostly just doing this because I wanted to be interacting with chat, computer. I'm just trying to get a little bit more of the white off because, like I said, it is the sticky part and... Uh, yeah. And I'm guaranteed that any, like, practicing chef would basically come in here and go, Why aren't you doing that with a purring knife? And it's because I don't want to accidentally cut off my fucking fingers. Because a paring knife can do pretty much everything that a vegetable peeler can do, but you know what? A vegetable peeler's just better at it. And that's okay. It's like a... I know there's plenty of chefs who really like to argue that, well, if I can't do it with a fucking chef's knife, I'm not gonna do it. It's like, then fucking... That's just a bad idea. It's like, yes, I can break down a chicken with a chef's knife, but a boning knife would make it so much easier. Give it enough time and insane effort, I could probably remove the pin bones from a salmon with a chef's knife. I would probably end up cutting off several fingertips at the same time, so why do it? I don't know, there's just a weird animosity to vegetable peelers. In my experience, at least. Come on. There we go. That's most of it off now. And you know, just covering the entire table, just for fun. Right, shit, I don't know what the password for this fucking PC is. Oh, this was a terrible plan. And I don't even know where my phone is, so I can't do the cheaty way that way either. <sighs> Butts. Also, another thing about it, I'm willing to bet this stream also currently has the Let's Play tag, doesn't it? So I should probably fix that, too. Ugh. What are the chances, you think, if I were to call Haley right now, that she would actually... Not call, text. Because um, if I were to call, she'd probably be in a meeting, and then she'd look down and see that she was getting a call from me and go, Oh god, he doesn't use the phone. What horrible thing has gone terribly wrong? So we're looking to cut these into, like inch cubes. It's one of those few cases where you don't actually need to be that uniform. Like, I want it to be relatively uniform because it will look better, but since 
effectively all of them are going to be cooked in one pot, and then we're going to take a fucking stick blender to it. Apparently I'm sweary today, not sure why, sorry. Uh, it doesn't super matter how they all look. I'm starting with the top half because I don't super want to do the bottom half. Because the bottom half will also involve, there we go, taking apart and dealing with, which are basically like pumpkin seeds, but less fun. I mean, less smelly too, but generally less fun. I swear to God, if you go for that, okay. There's a tiny bit of butternut squash that I just dropped on the floor, and the dog is just off camera, staring at me like, but what if I want butternut squash, which isn't necessarily bad for dogs, but it's not great for them either, because it's rather high in starch, and that's not exactly something they need a ton of. I mean, it's a plant, so it's basically all starch, but still. I think you might have noticed it now. <laughs> I should find my phone just so I can find out from Haley if she remembers. Like, she knows the password to this, and it's some password that her family uses, like a lazy default one, and I don't think I changed it to one of my lazy default ones. So, yeah. And then I'm just going to drop more on the floor, because the dog is getting all of his wishes come true. Having all of his wishes come true? That sounds worse. I don't know. But let's finish up with the butternut squash, because this is the part that no one's looking forward to. Ah, uh, yes. Actually, it's not that bad, because they're not, like, loose like a pumpkin. Here. I can just walk all the way over to the camera, because I can see it. They're not loose like a pumpkin, they're just sort of attached with this membrane that is annoying, but you can remove that with damn near anything. Like, a spoon. I mean, ideally a metal spoon, but a spoon. Uh, we don't have a big enough scoop, so I probably would like to go with a metal spoon, which we have none of, so I'm going to use my hands. I don't know why we don't have any metal spoons. We just don't. We just don't. Now I'm realizing after the fact that I'm using the hand that I hold to, I hope to hope the, ah, peanut butter mouth, I hope to hold the knife with, so not my smartest move, because this is even stickier than the outside. I'm just going to grab an actual just spoon to try and scoop out the rest of this, because you just want to sort of scrape your spoon along the edges of this membrane, and it'll mostly all come out if it wants to. It actually will, it just... Urgh. There's a reason I thought about doing this ahead of time. I was just like, no, I'll use it as downtime to talk with chat. Because I'll be able to see chat. You know, like an idiot. Like a damn idiot. I thought I'd be able to see chat. Oh, come on. Got like one fibrous thing that doesn't want to let go. Because this stuff... You really don't want to keep, because you know how everyone talks about how disgusting uh, the pumpkin, like, inner fiber stuff is? This is worse, because maybe the last time someone you know actually wanted to eat a pumpkin. Because this you do actually want to eat, but this fiber shit is disgusting. Well, you could probably use it for something, but I don't want to. Weirdest thing, if you had it, this would actually be another tool, or another thing that a grapefruit spoon would actually be really good at. Because they've got those sort of like serrated edges to help you get the grapefruit wedges out. And it would really help with removing this weird ass membrane. The seeds are actually fine to get rid of, it's just the membrane that's a pain. Because as I said before, it's very sticky. Well, it dries sticky, because it starts very slick, which is the other root issue here. Is that a terrible pun? I think that might have been a terrible pun. Come on. Don't make me try and take a knife to you. This'll be bad. Come on. There we go. That probably would have been a situation for a parry knife, but whatever. I don't want more things covered in goo. Unhelpful goo. That's weird, I thought I heard my phone ringing. 
It's extra strange because it's upstairs. Still, let's get this all broken down real quick. So that I can go and try and find password for this computer so I can see fucking chat. I feel really dumb about that now. Because it's entirely possible there's no one here and I'm just talking to myself. Which, to be fair, I was doing that this morning anyway, but... I feel better when I don't think that I'm talking to myself. Or when I have some sort of proof that there might be someone listening, so I'm not just shouting into the goddamn void. As you do, anyway, on a regular basis. Well, as I do, at least on a regular basis. Come here, all weird, slicey, edge things. I don't know what that word was. Series of words. Things. I said a lot of things there. And I'll be honest, I don't know what the hell any of them were. And this is definitely going to turn into one of those things where it's just like, it's not pretty, but it'll work. Turns out, trying to cut a, well, a sphere, a sphere with no internals <laughs> into cubes doesn't go terribly well. Who would have guessed? Anyone who's taken middle school or high school geometry, probably. What, what year do you take geometry in? Because I may or may not have taken geometry twice in both middle school and high school because of a series of issues with uh, geometry teachers, let's say. Yeah, let's stick with that story. That story sounds less dumb than the truth. But my grade school understanding is royally fucked up anyway, because I grew up in California where we had this wonderful program called uh, GATE that very early on was like, it was kind of like honors, but for elementary and early middle school. But instead of just being honors, you kind of skipped random bits of information. And it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, they taught you early on that you were gifted and that you didn't really need to try where a bunch of other students did. So as soon as you needed to try, you went, oh god, I'm an idiot now. No! Okay. Well, with that aggravating ass part done, let me go see if I can log into this computer and actually see chat. Ah, oh, shit. Oh, wait, I did assign a pin. Yes! Oh, good, I did assign a pin. I can actually pull up chat. And this is going to take a minute, because it's slow as fuck, but whatever. This may or may not be my first coffee of the day. It is. It 100% is. I haven't actually e <coughs> eaten yet, either. Wow, I can't talk. Yeah, what am I missing? Imagine working retail, the pumps and tea. Uh... Um, Damasu, this is not the only stream for today. I'm still going to be playing some Hollow Knight. Because I just want to play some Hollow Knight, damn it. This is just more... We have the fucking setup now, so why the hell not do it? Like, yeah, it's probably going to bring my fucking numbers down. Um, but I'm operating under the hope that it'll be a thing that new people who haven't been around will enjoy watching. It's... I, I hate paying attention to my numbers now. Because I'm trying to do that. And there's a decent chance that... God damn it. Sorry. So I tried to figure out a way to do a thing. Um, because I want to make our next big project. Uh, working on getting all the emote slots that will be available by the end of May. And that means that I need to be pushing harder for like... Uh, Subpoint tiers. And right now we're at like, we're somewhere between 20 and 21 because it phases in and out. So I need to make that a thing again. So I was trying to figure out if there was a way for me to show our follower goal and then have it like phase out and be replaced by a sub goal and have it out. No. 
Not without me manually doing it all the time. And that doesn't actually seem like it's worth it, if I'm honest. Yeah. Okay. Well, with those actually done, we can move over to the, eh, not the easier part so much as the more interesting part that isn't just chopping up a bunch of squash. Because who the hell likes chopping up squash? Not me, I've been bad talking it this entire time, clearly. <laughs> Why do I keep turning this water off? Like this water that is theoretically thawing out my short round steak. Not short round, god damn it. Bottom round steaks. Short round is not actually a cut of meat. Although, I get the feeling the butcher would probably respond if you asked for it. Yes, I know. Th oh my god. Wait, where? How is Cosmo visible on stream? No! There we go. Okay, and now I can. Beautiful! And I can still see that fucking message from the spam bot yesterday. Wonderful. No, I. Ah, oh, fuck you. I can't turn the quality down. Oh well. Well. That means now we can start working on the actual, like, aromatics for this. Because you need to have aromatics, or it's just a bunch of squash in a pot. I'm gonna decide if I want two or just one of these onions, because they're small onion. I guess I'll go for a medium size and a small one. I think the recipe specifically calls for a medium one, but these are very small onions. They're also yellow or sweet onions, which generally don't have the most flavor, so... <laughs> I love that this is the one time where you're apparently going to be downstairs with me, Cosmo. Because he spends almost every weekday uh, hiding out... Hiding out in a corner up the stairs until Haley gets home. Or until I offer to take them outside. Like, because we keep the bedroom door locked because... Both he and Oliver have this habit of getting on the bed and then punching holes in the sheet because they can't find a comfy spot, so they sort of, like, fidget around a ton on top of the bed. Come here. This wrapper does not want to come off. Um, so he just sits in front of the door to the bedroom because he knows he can't get in, but, I don't know, he wants to be closer to it? I don't know why. I really don't know why. What the hell? Come here, you bastard thing. This is the issue with, we've also had these onions for like a week, maybe two. So the most outer dried skin is really gripped on to the first useful onion layer to the degree that I'm gonna actually decide to say fuck it strip off the outermost useful layer, because it's just going to be easier. Because I'm lazy. And I'm using two onions anyway, so it'll be fine. It will be fine. Still need to figure out what we're doing with the beef. I haven't decided what we're doing with the beef. Ooh, I can see a gothic over there now. With his customary introduction of emotes. Oh, Joe Kim, hey! It's only two onions. I wouldn't like to lose this much onion, but unfortunately that's the case when I'm being impatient and I have, like, three recipes to do. And I still intend to play Hollow Knight today, so... Mm. Plus, like, a 60-60... 60-60? That's not how math works. 60-40 chance that... Haley won't actually want that much of this, and that it's just going to be me eating the the soup. So yeah, yeah. Or it was just that onion. It may just have. Been, yep, it was totally just that onion. That's what I get for taking the small one. Come here. You're not getting any of the, the dog is making sad faces at me. This is deadly to you. You're not getting any onion. 
Actually, it's probably not deadly in one bite, but still. I'm also going to be using garlic, and you're not getting near that either. <laughs> this is probably why, when Haley did her first cooking stream on this new setup, she did a bunch of her prep work ahead of time. I didn't. That would have been smart. That would have been smart. Instead, I decided that because I forgot that I wouldn't be able to see chat on the remote control, that, yeah, no, I'll just use it as a chance to see chat. But I mean, now that I can see chat, it's less bad. The saddest of faces? Exactly. He has nothing but the saddest of faces. <laughs> Is it weird that now that I'm doing this on camera, I'm thinking way more about actually trying to have the proper hold? Because I know myself and plenty of other cooks and former cooks, just like, yeah, no, you get used to how to hold your hand to not get cut. And it's not always the claw. It's often just sort of some weird, stupid way you're holding it. And I'm just like, oh god, now I have to think about it! That's so why I will continue to make... Getting really weirded out with the lapel mic, because this is the first time we're using this, too. Um, I will continue to be like, oh god, they can see my knife skills! Oh god! The last time I was in a fundamentals class was... Oh god. Oh god, the dog is looking at me and now I'm really thinking about it. The last time I was in my... So, I have a degree in baking and pastry, which means we only get one class that really focuses on knife skills. But it's also the class where they focus on fucking everything else that isn't baking. And like I said, there's only one of those, and I had it in... I had that class eight years ago in 2011. Okay. Because instead of doing the culinary program like Haley did, I just went, how about I go work in kitchens part-time as a line cook and part-time as a pastry cook? Instead of taking another eight and a half, I think, if I did to take the culinary one too. But since it took me an extra like two years to finish university in general, no, year and a half, it only took... Basically, to finish my bachelor's degree, it took me the time that it would have taken to just also do the culinary degree. <laughs> but yeah, it's been a while since I was in an actual place where anyone cared about my fucking knife skills. <laughs> hey, serpent! Wait, so Joe, were you going to comment on how my grip was bad, or how my grip looked like I was trying not to think about it? Because <laughs> I was definitely trying to not think about it. Because I think about how I'm holding my... the stuff I'm cutting too often anyway. You get back there. And now that I'm talking about it while thinking about it, I'm fucking it up again. Even more so. And these ones I'm cutting too thin. I was trying to go too fast. This is why the last thing that I cooked at home was a thing where I didn't need to actually do any sort of hard knife skills. I made... So for Valentine's Day, I tweeted about this. I made Haley steak au poivre and the same Brussels sprout recipe, which meant that no knife skills necessary at all. It was like minced garlic, cut off the stems of Brussels sprouts, that was it. But yeah, the reason why it says beef stuff, uh, Serpent, is because I've got two things that... Okay, I bought these and I still don't actually... I think they're beef bottom round. I don't remember what they were when I bought them. But they're just like discs of beef, I think beef bottom round. And because for some reason we have baby carrots, this is what we're going for the carrots for this. Uh, and I'm trying to figure out what the hell to do with them. Because I keep thinking, well, 
Haley didn't love steak au poivre because the steak au poivre was very peppery, which, I mean, that's what it was supposed to be, but it just wasn't super full. I don't have any heavy cream or cognac, and I used all the whiskey making it last time, which turns out whiskey makes a really good steak au poivre. Uh, da -da -da -da. Especially since I'm dicing it in the correct way. Well, thank you. This one will look less good because I only have baby carrots instead of real carrots. I don't know why we have baby carrots, but that's what we've got. Okay, fine. You'll get one. Come here. Come here. Can you up? There's the Cosmo. Good boy. Yes. Yes. You get a bit of carrot. You too, Oliver. Unless you just stare at it weirdly. There we go. We don't actually give our dogs treats. We just give them carrots. That's their entire, like, snack. <laughs> I never put one of our things under this cutting board. It is a miracle it has not tried to escape. I'm also totally going to need more baby carrots than that. Because I think... To be... F so, this recipe is one that I... Grabbed from somewhere else and then heavily edited it. Because it didn't call for any carrots and it didn't call for any brown sugar and things, but I think that I think that butternut squash soup needs brown sugar or honey. But I don't know for carrots. And I think it could very much use the aromatics of a good carrot. And I think one or two good sized carrots are fine for this, but since I have baby carrots, it's all sorts of fucked up. Just all sorts. And now there's still a dog waiting directly below me for more carrots. It's not gonna happen, but I... I love your willful ignorance that it's not gonna ha I don't know. That thought had more... That sentence did not have enough thought put into it. There we go. I can words. Just wait, I'm sure the fucking cat will show up too, because he was a massive pest when Haley was doing the Banana Foster's cookies. <laughs> Great googly movie, it's all gone to shit. Wait, nothing's gone to shit. Also, Gently Senpai, thank you very much for the follow. Welcome to the channel, friend. Welcome to the lair, and I hope you enjoy the lore. Okay, we should probably actually turn on this cooktop then, since I'm going to be starting putting butter in it. You can tell that I haven't worked as a baker either in a long time because I'm not checking my recipe at all. Just going, ah, this looks right. Which is extra good, too, because the printout that I made of my recipe has taught me that my printer isn't working super great anyway, because there's a non-zero amount of stuff that's just missing. Yeah, two tablespoons butter. That's two-ish tablespoons. There's the follow notice. Oh, thank you. Oh, no, it was a host notice. Thank you very much for the host, Gently Senpai. Welcome, friends. Um, right, this is what I want to cut over to. Not the couch, couch stream. There's no camera there. This is so weird not being able to see a live feed of things updating. So, there's the host. Oh, God, I'm watching this on such a delay. But, yeah, thank you very much for the host, friend. Um, for anyone who's new here because of that, hi, I'm Cap. So-called, because I'm literally Steven Rogers. Don't question it, it's weird. Uh, this is the Lair of Lore, where we mostly focus on storytelling and world-building and wonderful things like that. Except when sometimes it's cooking. Because I just love cooking. Okay, so we've got like two tablespoons of butter in here. Um, basic plan is just to wait until that melts down a little bit. I've got this around medium-ish heat. I'm going to be throwing in the aromatics first. Um, they need... Five to ten minutes? It's one of those weird things where I don't love judging that. Um, because I never feel like the time that I say is going to actually be correct. Um, and about halfway towards being done, we're going to throw in the carrots and onions. Or sorry, no. Halfway through, we're going to throw in the garlic, which I'm going to cut it back over to right now. There we go. Unless I can't figure out what button it is. Good lord. Hey, Dracus! 
Welcome, friends. God, it's a wonderful stream already now. Um, so yeah, I think the recipe calls for two... Actually, there's another one. The recipe didn't call for any garlic, but I went... I'm making food with aromatics. Why would I not put garlic in it, you monsters? However, once again, these are slightly older cloves of garlic, which means that their peel doesn't super want to come off. It also means that... I'm going to walk over to the camera with this that they're starting to go a little bit green, like they're not fully sprouting, which if they were sprouting, I'd question using them, but this I think is still okay. I think the recipe that I wrote down calls for like two. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I always tend to lean towards longer sweating on vegetables as well. Um, just cause, especially with onions, you're gonna get more sweetness out of them. But yeah, I think the recipe that I gave, or that I wrote out, calls for two, but I'm probably going to go with four, because I'm a monster like that. Ugh. And, since this is garlic, we can cheat. Um, so, like, I don't know if you can super see this, let me scoot this. I still want to have a camera up there and we're talking about it, we'll see. Um, knife, flat on the garlic, make sure that you don't touch the blade. You could also do this with a bench scraper, which would be much safer. Just that. It cracks the garlic enough that one, I'm also smelling it now, which is delicious, and two, it just makes it so that all the paper comes off. This actually doesn't work quite as well as pressure garlic, because the paper isn't as stuck to the garlic, so when you give it a good whack, the paper just kind of, st like, stays exactly where it was. In this case, it gets so, like, pressed up against the garlic, it seems to sort of spring away again. Because it's not like it's stuck so much as just it's hardened. Oh, God, I thought a dog was peeing in the house. I'm hearing the butter behind me bubbling. Oh, I thought about that way too hard. <laughs> Trying to figure out what that sound was. There we go. That, however, sound means that it's too hot. Getting some sound loss on the mic. God damn it. It did this last time too, uh, when we were trying out with a different mic. I'm not sure if it's batteries dying or if it's just me losing a good position with the, uh, uh, the USB dongle that pick, that's picking up the sound. Hang on. And true strategy of, uh, resetting the uh, mic will work. Um, here, let me cut over to this though. So yeah, we've got all of our wonderful, well, most Sorry, of I'm not sure about that. I wasn't talking to you. I've got most of our wonderful aromatics now in here, um, which means that I actually should turn the heat a little bit back up to recover. Well, I mince these garlic, which that's the other good thing about doing the like smack the garlic is that, especially if you smack it terribly hard, uh, it gets some of the mincing out of the way for you because as much as I support the use of a garlic press, I also tend to subscribe to the Alton Brown theory of no unitaskers. And I fucking hate cleaning a garlic press. So I just don't want to, which is why we don't have one here. Like, a lot of the things that we have or don't have in this kitchen are mostly because we used to be in a uh, an apartment kitchen. And we haven't really started to upscale yet since we got, well, since we bought our house. So that's definitely weirding, me, weirding us out, is that we've got a bunch of extra space that we're not always sure what to do with. Probably get an actual stirring device for this thing. Sure, that'll do. Oh god, I wish you could smell this. However, I have forgotten the primary rule of sweating, which is always sweat with salt. Because salt, being hydroscopic, and being salt, will help draw out some of the moisture of uh, whatever it is you're sweating. 
It will also help release some of the flavor as well, but mostly the moisture, because that's primarily what you're, what you're doing in a sweat. Now I need to figure out where Haley has hidden all of our little rests. Like, we've got those little ceramic rest things that you can set a set something down on to not dirty up your counters that I cleaned just before the stream. And I can't find any of them. Is the mic a wireless pack? Yes. Yeah. So, the mic is a lapel mic because when it's not cracking, which I don't know why it decided to crack now, um, it's a far enough distance that we can't run a mic cable all the way out here. And because we were, for the first stream, using this mic, which is okay, but ran into similar issues as the stream went on, and also picks up everything. Um, so we'll probably end up just using this whenever we have like more than one person cooking at a time. But, yeah... I'm trying to figure out if there's a way for me to at least get the receiver on the computer closer to here, but the current setup for that is basically just that would be some sort of bizarre USB extender hanging out a, the office doorway, and that would be strange. Unless we can figure out a way uh, to run the run it through the same system as the cameras. Because, as I've mentioned for a couple of y'all, that the cameras are a wonderful thing that we're doing. One, this entire cooking stream is brought to you by Aleph Cat, our wonderful patron who made all of this happen. And there's Lauratron with the surprisingly good timing about the Patreon plug. Um, that, like, this whole camera setup wouldn't be possible without him. One, because he's helped pay for it. And two, because he helped me with like figuring out how to set it up. Because all these cameras are not connected directly to my computer, they're all IP cameras that are running over our network. Which is the other reason why I'm amazed that we haven't dropped that many frames. Because it's I've been slowly trying to figure out what bitrate we can get away with for this stream. Because <laughs> it's not as high as I like with a lot of our other streams, but it's still not bad. Ah. And as I think you can hear it, the uh, these are starting to sweat much more nicely. I wish there was a way to sanitarily drop my lapel mic in here so you could hear it. Or, God forbid, I wish you could smell it. It's great. But because of the amount of onions we've got in there, I feel okay throwing in these four cloves of garlic that I've cooked up. Or cooked up, chopped up. Brain, what the hell? Why do you betray me so? It's because I'm thinking too much about what I'm trying to say. Ugh. I think some of it is the mic peaking. It might be the mic peaking. Um, and some of it's signal loss. I'm afraid it's signal loss just because of where the signal receiver is. The peaking I might be able to fix just by turning down the levels, but I'd have to do that over on the uh, office computer, which is a pain in the ass. Yes, delicious, delicious sweated vegetables with our poor microwave light that just doesn't turn on for reasons. So yeah, you can see now that the onions are starting to turn a bit translucent, but because these are a little bit bigger chunks of carrot, I'd like to let them go a little bit longer. Also, because I need to go grab the, uh, the, the, uh, I'm, I'm gesticulating at the camera y'all can't see right now. The, uh, the stock, which, hi chat, I'm sorry, but you're hiding the stock because it's in this cabinet that you're attached to. Just lazy, unsalted chicken, chicken stock. Um... I guess while we're waiting on that, I could start working on the Brussels sprouts, at least. So, I've got two different ways to do the bacon for the Brussels sprouts and the recipe. Because the secret tech from every kitchen ever is don't fry your ba- well, don't pan fry your bacon. Make it in the oven. Unfortunately, because I'd actually like to cut our bacon, 
Doing it in a pan is a little bit easier, so I can't show off that much, much easier method, but yeah. Um, how many slabs of bacon do we have in here? Probably No, that's more than four. Which is good, because this recipe only needs four, and Haley would probably be very unhappy if I used all the bacon. Eh, mostly just because it's Friday, and she'll want to make bacon tomorrow when she doesn't have to work. Um, this poor knife is just getting so much use today. Just a warning, I'm probably going to be honing it again, just because I've used it on a whole bunch of things now, and to reiterate, it's an important thing that you should do with your knives constant. well, not constantly, but a lot. Don't your stick your face anywhere dangerous, doglet. I don't know why I set this here in front of the cutting board. That's a silly plan. Hmm? Uh, try and see... Roadlink works with a microwave? Wait, what? Hang on. Just figured, let me get that out of the way first, and then I can try and figure out what I'm missing in chat. Because this, this is definitely the only thing I don't love about doing the cooking streams, is that I find it way harder to interact with chat. Also because I may or may not have spent a lot more time than I should have with the gaming streams, making sure that when I'm physically reading chat, uh, it looks like I'm looking into the camera, because I want to make sure that it's clear that that's what I'm doing. And I can't do that here because chat's here and you're there and it just doesn't work like that. It's throwing me off something fierce, I'll tell you. However, that is starting to get to the point that we should probably be moving over to the next step. But I'm gonna hope it'll last a little bit longer so that I can do, this is four slabs of bacon. I'm using, I actually don't remember exactly what this bacon is, but I know that it's pepper crusted, what is it? Thick cut peppered bacon, because I love peppered bacon. It's delicious. And I don't know, I always get worried that while everyone loves bacon as itself, I don't feel like plain bacon brings a lot to the table besides just eating bacon. So if I'm doing something where the bacon is effectively going to be a seasoning, I want to use a more interesting bacon. Like, if I want to use the bacon to make candy-coated bacon or something, then I would definitely be way more okay with some sort of plain bacon. Still thick cut, but... Since in this case, the bacon is basically just going to serve as a seasoning for the Brussels sprouts, I feel like the bacon should be more seasoned itself. I've probably cut enough things on this cutting board that I should swap it out soon, but we'll see. Yeah, there we go. Let go of the bacon knife, you traitor. Bacon is a type of salt cured pork. I don't know what I'm saying that she thinks I'm talking to her about. Turns out she was unplugged for like a week and I didn't notice. Because I accidentally plugged her back in this morning in order to have power for the uh, iPad that's running the switcher. Since that's what lets me do that. Uh oh, uh oh. Is this video still working? Or is this just the, com I'm hoping this is just the computer. Uh oh. Uh-oh. Yes, it is just the computer. Okay. It's the fun of only being able to see your chat from, like, the worst possible angle. Well, the worst possible computer. It's a, just a shit computer. Um, okay, yeah, that's looking about pretty good. Again, sorry for anyone who's new to the stream. The reason why you're seeing that as purple is because of, uh, well, when you can see it. Uh, is because of IR on the IP camera, so. Hmm. 
Okay, it's a uh, wireless mic based off of two channel 2.1 hertz mics. Oh, okay, or wireless, okay. Okay, well, let's get all of our wonderful squash in here. And please tell me I was smart and bought the... Don't make me do math. Why are you making me do math? Oh, God. It's actually not as much stock as we're supposed to have, so... It's also open. Why is it? Oh, okay. That's fun. Okay, so we're probably going to need a liquid to make up about two cups of this. I'll probably be going with milk. Just because I always feel like cream is a nice addition to pregnant squash soup, but we don't have any cream because I bought exactly as much as we needed for the steak au poivre. And... Yeah, I think we only have milk. This might be... Okay, well, that's an issue. Well, milk or grape juice, so it's going to be milk. <laughs> ah, yes, cooking on the fly. As I am generally kind of want to do anyway. So basic idea is that we now want to get this up to... At least... I just realized why the lighting looks so janky. Oh my lord. There's an entire light that isn't turned on. Except that for some reason, the switches for our light and our garbage disposal are swapped, and that scared the crap out of me. Good lord. Um, what was I saying? Does anyone remember what I was saying? I don't remember what I was saying. Oof. Okay, so yeah, we'll add two cups of milk to this. Should be interest. Should be fine. Fine. Let's go with fine. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, basic idea is we're trying to bring this up to a simmer so that we can cook the butternut squash with all of the other flavors that are present in this without overcooking all the other stuff in here. So we're going to bring up the heat a little bit to start with until we can bring... Ooh, there's a stray seed that made it in. Come here, you little fucker. No. Damn it. Be smart, human. You have tools. Oh my god. I'm going to be defeated by a seed. Come here. Come, come here. Ha! Ah, suck it. Got it. Okay. So yeah, we're going to turn up the uh, heat on this a little bit until we can bring it to a simmer. Just remember that the key element of a simmer is that you can't see it boiling, which means it's very hard to determine. Um, so I'm actually going to move it over to this burner, because over here, once this comes up to heat, we're going to fuck up some bacon. I mean, hopefully not actually fuck up some bacon, but we'll see. Do some ill-advised thing. no, do some very advised things to bacon. That's what I'm looking for. Where did Haley put all of the Brussels sprouts? Basically, just have a drawer in here that was dedicated to Brussels sprouts. You know, like you do. It's just a sprout drawer. Oh, this poor video that I'm able to keep up with is so far behind. Okay, that's about a good temp. Probably gonna end up bringing it down, but whatever. Okay. So there's our wonderful, delicious, glorious, wonderful, I'm running out of adjectives, Peppered bacon should be quite delicious. However, because I didn't pull them apart, there we go, because I didn't pull them apart when we were cutting them, all four slabs are sort of stuck together. That's not a big issue, but it's annoying enough that I probably should have fixed it ahead of time. So this is a weird case because we actually want to be running this on a relatively low temperature because our goal isn't so much to cook the bacon as it is to just break the bacon or uh, to render the fat out of the bacon because the fat in the bacon is what we're going to mostly be using as our cooking medium for the Brussels sprouts. So we can let this go for a little bit. Actually, I can turn the heat down on it a little. 
Hey, Odinson, how you doing, friend? Uh, let's get the other good-sized cutting board in here. Clean off my disgusting kitchen counter. Don't actually clean your counters this way, please, but in this case, the only things I'm brushing off are things that are totally edible by the dog, so I don't care that much. I still care a bit, and I will be annoyed with myself later when I watch this back as I get the YouTube VOD ready, and I look at it and go, Oh my god, you idiot, why would you do that? Urgh. Okay. This time I'm being smart and wanted to actually get, like, a slightly wetted rag out so that I don't just slide shit around. And since I've been using that poor other knife a bunch, I figure I might as well switch over to the other chef's knife. Because eh, there's actually not a big difference between, between this one and the other one, besides it's got the, like, grooves. Which... I don't actually think they do anything on a chef's knife. Like, they're super useful on a big scimitar slicer or anything like that, where these reduce drag. I don't know why I keep trying, I keep trying to do this, basically. Like, these things reduce uh, the drag. If you're, say, using a big slicer that you're cutting through big whole chunks of meat. That's not what we're doing, so it's not actually helping us. Which, yeah. So it's just extraneous bullshit, but meh. Tired and eating lunch? Well, that's good, at least. Sorry again about the noise, y'all. I'll try and get it done quickly. Remember to do it an even number of times on both sides. Okay. So yeah, this is my fuck of uh, Brussels sprouts that we're going to be using. Yeah, they make it look 40% cooler. Yeah. Um, which reminds me, I should turn on our wonderful oven. Good lord. Uh, 75. I think the recipe says 50, but either one works. Okay. And really quickly, I want to cut over to here just to show you that the other thing that's nice, though, is that this particular bacon, some bacons won't do this, but as this bacon is rendering down, it's starting to split apart a little bit better. So we can get it nice and, like, evenly spread. But mostly, like I said, we're just looking for rendering out the fat here because we need the fat for cooking those Brussels sprouts. Ooh, there's some over there that aren't getting any heat. Hey, Alcat. I was already, I was actually shouting your praises earlier since I really couldn't be doing any of this without you. I should have more coffee because it's new. Oh God, it's 1.20 and this is my first coffee of the day and I think I've had three cheese sticks. I can't wait for this food to be done. Um, which reminds me, for anyone who's still here, we're still trying to come up with ideas for what to do with... Uh, What's it called? Um, quick thing, so with the Brussels sprouts, we're cutting off basically the stem end just because there's a lot of inedible fiber stuff down there. And generally, leaves fall off, fall off because they're external leaves, which means they're what has been catching a lot of the dirt. Um, technically, there could still be dirt inside, but that's one of those things where I feel like getting at that is more trouble than it's worth. So I'm gonna quarter them. Uh, maybe I might do more than quarters if they're particularly big, but this was a pretty solid chunky one And I'm still only doing quarters of that um, But yeah, we just want to quarter them so they open up a little bit so that we can get that bacon grease inside <laughs> Oh god, does it not uh, it might not align you're totally right. I so that the camera sits better, I rotated the camera itself and then flipped it vertically so it probably doesn't completely align. You're totally right. Unfortunately, I can't super fix that from here, which annoys me to no end. I assure you. Yeah, you, you mercifully, Elifcat, managed to miss all of the parts where I could not see chat. I should stop doing that noise. I'm very sorry. Yeah, this one's small enough that I'm probably just going to do it into, like, halves. Sorry, that's just one of those things that you... That. 
doing that to like scrape stuff off to the side of the, your board with the chef's knife that doesn't work great as soon as someone is actually trying to listen to you, but it's just something you get used to being part of your, your method, I guess, for lack of a better word. Just like, yeah, it's, it's the thing I do once I'm done cutting an individual piece of something so that I can clear off my board more. Because it's that or you turn into one of those people that doesn't clean your goddamn board. Those people, there's a special place in hell for them. There's a very special place in hell for people who don't keep their workplace clean. I guess technically I mean workstation, but yeah. Same-ish. Right? It's the same-ish. Mm -hmm. Everything is slightly sizzling. We still... So does anyone have any ideas what we should do with that beef short round? Beef bottom round? Good lord, I can't do that. Because I'm thinking we could do some beef stroganoff, but if we do, I'm going to have to do it with... Uh, um, what's it called? Cream of mushroom soup. Or I guess we could do it with cream of potato, and then I have mushrooms that we could add to it. I know that I'm not talking at the camera, and that's weirding me out. Sorry. Because uh, it should be thawed relatively soonish. I just don't know what to do with it. I'm just like, this needs protein. Because... I'm probably going to eat this all of today, and Haley will probably come home and eat a fair amount of this today, and then we'll probably f eat this for the weekend as well. I feel like it needs it needs a protein element. Because butternut squash is okay for protein, and Brussels sprouts are okay for protein, but... So this is a very pale sprout. Which, in this case, actually means that it's a much older sprout, because the core has extended outwards. Um, but I also haven't asked, how's everyone's day going on this Friday that, I guess Odin Sun is working, but it's late enough for some of y'all that you should be done with your work week, hopefully. Done with your work week, or some of you, I know, I think at least one of you is well into Saturday at this point, international dateline being what it is. Dog is still me. Still. Terrible pun. Awful. Downright atrocious. Oh, right. I need garlic for this, too. I forgot about that. This one, I will probably do more garlic. Um, because this recipe... It doesn't say it in the written recipe because it's definitely personal taste. We tend to add garlic powder to it. Um, just because, because it's so based on the bacon grease, uh, raw garlic sometimes doesn't always bring full flavor. And the thing with garlic powder is that, one, it often gets mislabeled with garlic salt, so a lot of people tend to think that it's a really salty thing, which it's not, it shouldn't be. And two... Uh, people will complain that it doesn't taste a lot like garlic, and that's because it needs time to, like, reabsorb water to basically become very tiny granulated garlic again. And if you don't give it that time, it's just going to taste like powder. But we are going to give it that time. You finished your work week and your tea? Wonderful. Was it good tea? Um, but yeah, since we're going to be... I think like powder is to use another Alton Brown thing. Uh, dips. Anytime you're making like a dip, that is a great time to use garlic powder instead of actual garlic. Just because, well, not garlic powder, granulated garlic, though they're generally sold interchangeably depending on where you live. Um, because it's literally just dried garlic ground down to a very small state. So if you're putting it into a dip, which are almost always liquid or cream-based, it's going to have a lot to rehydrate and bring some really nice flavors to the party. <laughs> well, if you get out of the way. I'm still thinking maybe beef stroganoff. I just don't know. I feel like that needs 
a bed to rest on, because the thing with beef stroganoff is it's a really nice, heavy, rich sort of thing, but generally you want it with something else to like rest on. And we already have, we're gonna have, ooh, this is actually boiling over. Well, not boiling over so much as just like, it's too hot. We need that would be the downside of having milk in here instead of all stock. But I think the trade-off's gonna be okay with the flavor bonus that we're gonna get from having the milk. Pardon me while I cut cameras real quick. So this would be why, oh, that was the oven deciding that it was uh, done. Or done, but like fully heated. So as you'll see over here, this foam on top is because it boiled and that's not a good thing. That's something we don't want. That's why it's also still bubbling up because remember that if you're seeing bubbles, it means that you do have a full boil. And what we're trying to do here is simmer. So this is definitely hotter than we need it to be. Because if it uh, boils for too long, we're going to end up having to deal with um, the other ingredients that are in here that were already cooked getting overcooked. And that's not something we want to deal with. So I'm actually going to move this to a lower, lighter burner in the back. Actually, how about this one? Yeah, we'll move it to this back burner here. There we go. And we'll run it at like medium low. Well, we keep the bacon right here. There we go. That seems downright reasonable, right? Right. Hrumpf. Pardon me while I walk over here to, okay, yeah, that doesn't look terrible. Um, I am going to close that window though, because that lighting is awful. I am so sorry. <laughs> That lighting is real bad, which inevitably encourages the cat to show up, but we'll see. Okay. There, that should be better. Yeah, now this has already come back down to a simmer. That's much better. Good, 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 good. Actually, that's a little bit too little light, but okay. Uh, I curse the attempts to control natural lighting. Ooh, homemade lamb curry. Oh, that sounds really good, actually. I am jealous. Um, okay, while I'm at it, I'm going to walk over and try and fix that overlay real quick. I don't know why it's so offset. I flipped it vertically. That shouldn't have flipped it horizontally, but whatever. Oh, God. I'm now remembering the some painful elements about working in kitchens, all the standing. Because like you sit down for the first time in a while and go, ah, that, that is suffering. How, why is sitting suffering? That's not the way this is supposed to be. Okay, there we go. Urf. Okay, I'm coming back. Yeah, I saw you Cosmo hanging out on camera. Weird little fuzz beast. Okay, this bacon is almost done. I'd still like to give it a little bit more heat to render out a bit more fat, but this is almost there. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, there we go. Come back here, wide shot. But we're not actually done with all the Brussels sprouts yet, so I should probably catch up. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that is a very large Brussels sprout with a bunch of very shitty leaves on the outside. So let's take those off. There we go. <laughs> Probably should actually cut that one into even smaller bits, but whatever. We're almost all caught up now. Almost. Kind of. Ish. So yeah, I'm just trying to think what we want to do with this beef. Like, I could cut it into thin strips and do a lot of things with it, but I don't know if there's anything that would actually go well with what we've got here. Because I've thought it now, because I definitely don't want to refreeze it, so I've got to use it for something. I'm just not super sure what. 
close enough. Because I guess I could see if we've... I don't think we have any egg noodles, but... Probably have something that I could rest the... Uh, we could just do beef stroganoff and rice. That's always a nice classic. Um, though personally, growing up, my mom always did a beef... A, a, a sort of lazy beef stroganoff like the one we're talking about doing here. Wide shot, gotcha. God damn it. Um, a, a lazy beef stroganoff like the one I'm talking about doing here where we use a canned cream of X soup to give us most of the body for it. And she always did it with uh, ground beef. And we do it as, like, we never had Sloppy Joes. We did beef stroganoff as a Sloppy Joe. And oh my god, that was wonderful. Because it was like this creamy, like, instead of being a weird tomato-based sort of loose sauce thing, it was like a much more uh, tight and delicious um, beef stroganoff. Oh god, it was so weird. We could totally do that, though. I mean, I'm not sure if it would actually be the best. How about some goulash and spots? Okay. I feel like I have a bunch of good goulash recipes, but I feel like that has a similar issue. Requires a bunch of things I don't necessarily have. I don't actually know what spots is. Or, actually, no, because the name is sticking out in my brain like I should know what it is. I'm not remembering what it is. But goulash is definitely good. I just don't have a lot of the stuff that I'd like in a goulash. Also, isn't goulash usually, like, slow-cooked? Like, with, uh... Well, not slow-cooked, but, like, slower cooking methods, like braising for the meat. Because it's not technically a... S no, it is totally a stew, isn't it? Goulash is a stew, which means that, ironically, never make a stew by stewing. Almost every stew is better made uh, by braising the meat, which is to say, instead of fully immersing the meat in a uh, liquid with a whole bunch of like flavors and aromatics and such, you actually want to partially immerse it in a much more concentrated uh, liquid and then slow cook it in that and then, well, not even slow cook, you can actually do a fast braise as well, but usually slow is better. Um, and then flip it about halfway through so the other side gets the intense flavor as well. Stewing tends to create a much tougher meat. <laughs> How to explain Spotsil. <laughs> also, am I saying the name right? I feel like it's, like I said, I feel like it's a thing I've heard of and may even have cooked because one of the places where I worked, we had a lot of, um, uh, I don't know how to describe it, but we had a bunch of days where it was like, Today, we're cooking the foods of this region. So, I got experience with a whole bunch of very weird things. And with at least one... Oh, God, I worked with a guy who fucked up carnitas so bad. Like, the meat in the carnitas was delicious. He didn't... He put entire oranges in to make the carnitas, which meant that there was a small chance that you would take a bite of your carnitas and go, There is, like, a chunk of an entire orange in here including uh, the pith, which is not pleasant. I'm not, damn it. Uh, make an egg runny dough, push it through, sieve. Oh, I have made that. Um, oh God, I want to say Miriam has a good recipe for it that we used at the place where we worked together. I have definitely made that. I want to say it was Miriam. Someone I worked with had a really great recipe for that stuff. I will probably continue to say the name entirely wrong, but I have made it. This is one of those things where it's like, I have approximate knowledge of many things and have cooked or cooked around many things. Da -da -da. Okay, this needs more heat, because it's on the smaller burner. However, our bacon is definitely done. So let me cut over to that real quick, just so y'all can see it. So this bacon is definitely very good. So, it's a little crispy, but it's not fully done yet, which means that it'll still get a lot of, uh, it won't burn when it's in the oven. 
because this is really what we wanted. We wanted to render it, not necessarily cook it. So, uh-oh. Uh-oh, am I actually offline, or is that the... Okay, okay, it's just the stream that I'm watching. Okay. This computer is garbage. Okay. So, yeah. We want to get as much of the bacon... This is a non-stick pan. All that bacon grease right in there. Right in there. And now we will finally season this. Hang on. I'm just getting some cold water into this pan so it doesn't shock anything else in the sink. Okay. So now we'll finally season this, because I didn't want to season this until we had the bacon grease in, because the bacon grease is what's going to help uh, everything stick to the uh, Brussels sprouts. Because if you don't have it, then it's just going to sit there next to the Brussels sprouts. I'm also going to let this sit and sort of like open up a bit before we bake it. Well, roast it technically. But roasting is just baking anything that isn't a baked good. Um, I wish I could say how much salt I'm doing here. Probably like two teaspoons. Um, I also will admit that I tend to over pepper things. So that was probably like six good grinds and most people would probably advise using less. Um, like I said, I'm going to be using granulated garlic because in this case it's going to have the time to open up and it's going to stick a lot better to the actual uh, sprouts. So normally I would totally use garlic for this, but this is the one case where I think granulated is actually better. And it's maybe a teaspoon because it's strong juju. So we're going to still mix this all together. Might add a little bit of olive oil if it looks like the oil doesn't, or the bacon grease doesn't completely coat the uh, Brussels sprouts. But honestly, it's looking pretty good. And this was four slabs of thick cut bacon. And it's more, it looks like it's going to be more than enough grease than we need, actually. So yeah, we're just going to let this sit for probably like five, ten minutes. And we're throwing it in the oven behind me and it'll be all good. I mean, we're going to throw it in a sheet pan, and because I hate cleaning, we are going to be throwing it in a sheet pan with some parchment on it, but otherwise, we're pretty much all good. Um, so if you'll give me a chance, I'm going to run away for a second to go grab my phone, because it's still upstairs. I'll be back in just a minute. I mean, I'll still have this on, so I guess I can... Ta it's probably going to go... Okay, I guess I'll have this on, but just a warning, it might go, like, fitzy, because I'm going through, like, at least the ceiling, so it probably won't continue working since it's been spotty in here alone, but eh, we'll see. It's a test drive. Let's, let's go with that. It's a test drive. Well, I idiotically monologue to myself for some reason. I don't know. I just want the phone, okay? It seemed important at the time, right? Uh, da, 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 da. Yay, I have phone now. Now I come downstairs. Oh god, I can smell the- Okay, I walked into the bedroom, closed the door partially behind me so the dogs wouldn't come in, came back out, and all I smell is bacon, and it's fucking delicious. Oh, I'm so happy. Oh, bacon good. Oh, good. Really? Did you really have to make a ghoulish pun? A ghoulish pun. Okay, this is starting to get there. So what we're really looking for here is to try and get our... Yeah, it's not there yet. We're trying to not cook off too much, uh, too much of the liquid, which is why we're trying to avoid the boil on this. Um... I mean, I'm probably the villain, let's be honest here. So we're trying not to boil this, because we don't want to lose the liquid. What we're trying to do is just get it to a simmer so that we can get all of this um, butternut squash to be fork tender. Which, we're getting there. It's just a process. 
It's a process. Um, what was I doing? I swear I was do right. I went to get the phone for a reason. Um. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm... You're all making terrible puns. What's wrong with all of you, you monsters? Okay, sorry. Um, I was actually sending a text of, uh, I didn't leave you unsupervised. I'm watching you right now. Uh, sorry, I was actually sending a text to my mom, of all people. Um, but yeah. Okay, this is done. Cat. I knew it. I knew you'd be down here. I knew he'd be down here. Here, I'm going to rest him on the lapel mic so you can all hear him purring. And probably can't hear me, if I'm honest. You're not even purring. You ruined this. No. Now I wash my hands, because cat. <sighs> yeah, muffled me, and... Ho I was hoping for purring cat. I didn't think he was actually purring, though. Aw, we definitely... Aw. So... There's definitely been an issue over there because I let the, the milk boil. Um, it's definitely curdled a bit and separated, which would be an issue, but I think we're going to be okay. I think we're going to be okay. Um, we just need to make sure that it doesn't boil again, or else it will basically be useless. Ugh, I forgot how cold our cold water can be. Okay, so I'm still thinking we might want to do the beef stroganoff, I think. Um, not really, but you pretend. Ah, good enough. Um, so, if we do the beef stroganoff, we could probably... I mean, let's see what, what, what starches we have to sort of serve it with. Because normally you serve beef stroganoff on sort of like a bed of egg noodles. Um, I didn't get, oh, okay, good. That's actually better than I expected. I was afraid that I would have the options of, um, cream of potato or cream of mushroom, but we only have cream of potato. So what we could do is use this as the base and then, uh, saute off some mushrooms that we've already got, some onions, garlic, uh, do the beef. That might be okay. But the issue then is still what to do with it. Because we've got rice, um, which is a bit more traditional, but not necessarily required. And then we had beef stock. Shit, I would have used that to replace the, the missing ingredients. I thought Haley used all the beef stock. Um, hang on, did she have me get beef stock and then not use it? Oh my god, she didn't. She used my chicken stock instead. Okay. Um, I guess if technically we wanted to, ooh, I'm gonna think about this. This is not, this, I know you can't actually see what it is. This is not for the beef, but this might be a nice addition to the uh, butternut squash soup because it's molasses, uh, which might be a solid replacement for uh, the brown sugar and add a little bit more liquid. We'll see. Um, Wow, is rice really the only starch we've got in here? It might be. I mean, there's barley, but I don't. I feel like barley is more of an additive to soup in this case than a good starch to rest something on top of. Yeah, I guess let's go with the rice. Um, I do brown rice, I guess. I don't. I don't know how long we've had this. Oh well. Go with brown rice. There we go. We have a plan now. We're doing some sort of 
bizarre beef stroganoff thing with cream of potato instead of cream of mushroom. It's going to be fine. It's going to be delicious. Everything will be enjoyable. Everything will be perfect. I'm going to add some of this. Rice is good with stroganoff. Yeah, that's sort of what I was thinking. Um... I don't know what either of those websites are, but, uh, sure, Stark. Um, yeah, let's go, I'm just gonna add a little bit of molasses to this. And we'll probably add more later, once we take the stick to it. Remember to always be ready to give your soups the stick, assuming you have one. Assuming I can figure out where the hell our stick currently is. Uh, I think it's up here. It is not. Um, that might be it. I think it's this. Oh god. This is where we keep all of our appliances that we don't use on a regular basis. Nope, that is a blender. Or not a blender, an egg beater. I mean, I could use the Ninja instead. I'd really prefer to use a stick blender, though. If I were Haley, where would I put a stick blender? Hmm. Uh, oh, it's the company that does Pathfinder. Okay. And one is you not realizing that you're doing their name wrong. Okay. Makes sense. Just want to see... Ooh, these are definitely fork tender now. Yeah, we can take the stick to this if I can find the bloody stick. Oh, it's in one of these drawers, right. Um, extra bonus points because I'm pretty sure I'll it here. Yep, there it is. This is the secret of everyone who ever, ever wants to make soup. Me and Stark. Um, this is the secret tool of anyone who makes soup. Stick blenders are the best. Also referred to as immersion blenders. Cat, if you jump on this table, you're gonna be in trouble. You're fine on the chair. It's just the table where we'll have an issue. <sighs> okay. Well, let's cut back over to the cooktop cam. Reopen this window just a little bit. I'm watching you, cat. So yeah, as you can see, the we've got milk, proteins, and fat sort of s sitting on the surface, so that's definitely not appetizing. But, after we run the stick blender through it, this should become a much neater thing. Let's start on low. So what we're trying to do here is basically break up as much of that starch as we can um, until we get a nice, relatively consistent soup. We still might want to then cook this off a little bit more to actually try and lose some of the liquid because right now the goal is just break down all those chunkies break them down until we've got a nice smooth consistent soup we're never going to get a pure liquid from this but this will get us most of the way there okay so yeah, that's about where we want it to be, so that's pretty solid. However, it's definitely too loose for the soup that we're looking to have. So, hang on. Just quickly cleaning this, because you don't want stuff to set up on your uh, immersion blender, stick mixer, whatever the hell you want to call it. Let's taste this and find out. One, is it nappe? It actually is nappe. Um, what we're looking for there is see how this line is unbroken, even if the 
uh, spoon sort of inverts the... It's because we've got that starch in there that's holding it just enough together. Um, this is not sweet or salty enough for my taste. Yeah. We also probably still going to want to run it through the Ninja anyway, near the end, just because it's still a bit chunkier than I super want it to be. <laughs> ah. So yeah, we're definitely going to want to run this through the Ninja Blender at the end, but right now the primary focus for us should be seasoning. So it's not salty enough for sure, so let's add probably about a half tablespoon, yeah, half tablespoon of salt. Uh, like six good grinds of pepper. Um, let's keep going with that blackstrap molasses, actually. I was thinking about doing um, honey, but let's do some blackstrap instead. And no brown sugar. We'll just do the blackstrap. Well, we might still want to do some brown sugar. Hang on. No, no, I think the blackstrap's a good idea. Personally, I think when I made this for... I was in a cooking competition... Let's say that's about like a tablespoon. That's my coffee maker, sorry. Um, I did this for a cooking competition. And I believe I did it actually with maple syrup instead. Because we happen to have 100% maple syrup on hand. <laughs> it's on low now just to mostly mix. And then we'll rocket it up to low or high. So that's relatively well mixed, but now our big thing is just going to be, we want to get this just above a simmer. We don't want a rolling boil, because a rolling boil will get us what we already had, which is that same issue of uh, it'll start to coagulate the milk proteins, and that just won't be a pleasant thing. We want to get a, uh, like, just above a simmer so that we've got enough so that the water that's locked into this can escape and help us thicken the soup a little bit. And yes, it is the opposite of solid. <laughs> Um, it's definitely been long enough now for our, uh, Brussels sprouts. And they've now basically absorbed all the bacon grease, which is real nice, uh, that we're going to throw this in the oven now. So I've got our sheet pan already. I'm going to throw down some parchment paper so I don't have to clean it, because why in the hell would you want to clean it? Unfortunately, the stupid cutter thing on our parchment paper box has come off, so I have to do this a little bit more carefully. So the goal here, yep, there we go, is to make sure that you've got more parchment than pan, so that you can just press it down. There we go. <laughs> And then we just lay everything out nice and easy. Um, because we let this sit, it will take a little bit more effort to get everything out of the pan because we'll have a very thin layer of uh, partially solidified bacon grease in there. Well, partially solid. It's solid now. It's, it's no longer in a liquid state. Okay. So we want this to be as even a layer along the bottom as we can. Nice and level so that not more than one quarter sprout is ever, there we go, so that you don't have any like stacked on top of each other so it cooks nice and evenly. And voila, it's just that easy, I'm gonna throw it in the oven, pull it out when it's done. It's gonna be like 20-ish minutes, ish, ish, heavy ish. Because that's sort of my issue is I don't, I don't have a good grasp on paying attention to how long things cook for, I just cook them until I think they're done. Um, yeah. Ish. Exactly. Ish. Ah. Your issue, if you will. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Well, let's find a pan for... Oh, beef stroke. A little bit too... Ah, uh, unwieldy. That might work. Here we go. I think technically this is a pan, not a pot. Uh, don't 
actually remember what it is. Pretty sure this is a pan. Because of the long, long handle, but uh, who fuck knows. Okay. Ooh, this is starting to thicken up. <sighs> we do not have that silly ass blender that can like spin fast enough that it can cook soup. Which I think that's not the ninja, that's the Oh god. Uh it's the other relatively famous blender company thing. Oh god. Does anyone remember what it is? Someone spare me for my own brain, please. It's not ninja, because ninja's the one we have. Oh, whatever. Someone will remind me in short time. I didn't put this away. Oops. Except if I put it away, I'll have to move it again to get it the ninja. Yeah, I'll just move it off camera. You hush. Yes, I'm talking to a trash can. Shut up. Okay. Well, I guess we're doing beef stroganoff then, because apparently, without input from chat, I've talked myself into this. Um, this beef is mostly thawed, so that'll be okay. Okay. Here. Yeah, anyway, these are our two bottom round steaks that I've had in the freezer for two weeks, two-ish weeks, whatever Valentine's Day was. I bought them the day, yeah, the day of Valentine's Day. <laughs> Your input is that you have to eat it. Well, I intend to eat it. I haven't eaten yet today. That's what I'm doing here is making myself... I probably should have made like a quick breakfast at the beginning while doing all this, but eh. Then again, I probably could have also had all of this done in like no time at all if I weren't so easily distracted and trying to talk about everything. Cooking is one of those weird things where if you do it professionally, you learn that there's a lot of things you can't necessarily speed up. So like, yes, in this time I have made all of these things and I probably couldn't have made many of them that much faster, but there was a lot of downtime in there where I could have been prepping another thing. So like, had we decided on beef stroganoff sooner, I could probably have made it so that the beef stroganoff would be done around the same time as the other things we're doing. Because it's always that weird thing with cooking. Um, I don't necessarily want to wash my hands, so let me see if I can get these, these Kirkland gloves that Haley has on. You know, to be sanitary. That's not, okay, to be clear, I'm not saying that I didn't wash my hands, that's what I was doing over there. I'm saying that I don't want to wash my hands again, which, okay, technically in pretty much every part of the states, um, you are required by federal law in a culinary institution to wash your hands before putting on gloves, change your gloves whenever you transition uh, things. So like if you transition to or away from meat to a different meat or from meat to anything that isn't meat or from anything to meat, you're supposed to take off your gloves, wash your hands, put on a new set of gloves by federal standards. I'm not cooking this for anyone else, so I don't necessarily feel obliged to follow those, but it's still safe practice, honestly. So what we want to do here is, one, we might want to remove some of this fat. At the same time, it's actually not significant. Maybe we'll want to remove, there's like some very thick grisly bits here in the middle that we might want to remove, but mostly what we're going to be doing is just cutting this into strips. And because these aren't super with or against the grain, they're just sort of like a perfect slice out of the center. Um, we don't necessarily need to be doing any particular methods of cutting, so I'm just going to be doing just strips. Um, I'm trying to aim for relatively even thickness, but I say that and immediately fuck it up. Eh, even then, I think we'll be okay without trying to cut out some of these more grisly things, because most of them are fat. Yeah, these are all basically fat, actually. So we shouldn't even really need to cook them out because if we're cooking this at the temperatures that I uh, intend to cook this at, most of it should melt down and just add more flavor. Should. Not saying it will, but should. 
um, because these are not prime cu primal cuts, um, Butcher's already been at them, and looks like the, the place where I bought these was quite good and removed basically all of the connective tissue that you as a human being can't actually digest. So that's good. You often will not run into that case with a lot of butchers, but... Well, sorry. Professional butchers, yes. Iffy for supermarket butcher, butchers, which is where these came from. That one was just a bit thick, and I'm going to pull that off. Otherwise, these are honestly pretty solid. I'm a little bit worried about this one, because this one still has a frozen chunk right here, but eh, it shouldn't be bad. <laughs> You can eat your own germs. That's not the way that works at all. The reason why you do the uh, the glove transitions is always because it's to avoid cross contamination from bringing uh, one meat product over to another, or especially with all of the supply uh, issues, bringing uh, E. coli over to meats that wouldn't necessarily be cooked up to a degree to kill E. coli. Because that's always sort of the issue, is that the reason why um, E. coli breakouts are such a common thing is... Be actually, okay, I'm, I admit that this is one place where the, the grooves are actually helping. Um, the partially frozen meat. Um, is because a lot of the things that we have E. coli out are things that were exposed during the growing uh, period to of most often pigs um, that are a carrier for E. coli or cows as well uh, but then it's a raw ingredient so it's something that is minimally processed and doesn't see heat treatment even in the even in the kitchen space that was too thin so that's why we have stuff like uh, melons and romaine lettuce that get the E. coli outbreaks, because they just don't get cooked that much. If you were to cook them, it wouldn't matter if they had E. coli, because if you cook them up to a high enough temperature, they would be fine. Also, if you cook them up to a high enough temperature, they taste like shit, so no one does it. And there's a big chunk of connective on the end of this one that I want to get rid of. Come on. Silly remote thing. Well, this one's not a great split, but that's okay. Oh, there's even more connective tissue there. Okay, we found the one that the butcher didn't get terribly well. But otherwise, that's all quite good. Don't want to set that knife down there, because that would be bad. Because we're still using this area. God, really? I've only been live for two hours? Weird. I guess that math works out, yeah. Don't tell Calsper he can have steak. I'll never hear the end of it. Ever. Okay, good. This is nice and simmering. That black strap really gave this some, like, serious dark color. It's not bad. It's just different. Cat. Can I, can I help you, cat? Are you interested in my cream of mushroom soup? Yeah, that's what I thought. Leave that cream of mushroom soup alone, you little fuzzy bastard. Okay, that still needs, ooh, that smell was so good. This still needs like 10, 15 minutes. Layer of food. I mean, that's basically what this is. It's a dining car. We're making food. Which means I should actually start cooking the meat. So let's slide this one on over and get it back onto a different heat source. <laughs> get this up to, yeah, four is probably okay. Because... So the thing with beef stroganoff is that because we're going to be making effectively a cream sauce, I don't have sour cream, do I? That's going to be different. Okay. Uh, we're going to be making a cream sauce with, like, honestly, probably some cream cheese. Um, you don't necessarily want to cook beef in a cream sauce because it takes on some weird flavors. Um, so what you actually want to do is pre-cook the beef Set it aside, make your cream sauce, and add the beef to it. Or more accurate, the other way, you can hiccup and die now, I'm sorry. Or make it as like a, a cream sauce that doesn't necessarily require heat until the end so the beef can be and doesn't take on any extra flavors. 
Yeah, that's the issue with the, where I've got the bin placed, is that it goes, Do you need me? And opens, yeah. Okay. How is this doing? Don't. Ooh. Ooh, that's much better. Still needs a little bit more salt, though. I also should not have done that with my finger, but whatever. That's sort of the issue with adding salt to a uh, soup, is that you really need to wait for the salt to completely permeate the entire thing to really get a feel for it. I'm going to add a little bit of honey, too. Just to give a different kind of sweetness, because the black strap is very much a... How do you describe it? It's very much like a darker, stronger sweetness that carries more flavor. Honey is going to be a little bit more of like a pure sweet, more than anything else. Like, it has some flavor to it, but not as much. I seem to have set down the, the spoon I was using for this, so let's go grab another one. Because we don't necessarily want that honey to rest on the bottom of the pot and burn, because that would be bad. So yeah, right now, this really is just going to sort of keep going for a while until we can reduce reduce it down a bit. Um, yeah. So let's cut over here. Okay. That's a good temperature-ish for our beef. He says, realizing that he took the gloves off before moving the beef to the cooktop. You know, like a smarticle. I'm good at this. I was once a professional, once for way too many years to count. Ay, ay, ay. Come here. Good Lord, gloves, come on. God, yeah, I was actually a professional cook for almost eight years, wasn't I? Jesus. Depending on whether or not you count the periods of time when I was working for people and not getting paid, because I did some shadowing um, before college. Yeah. Nice long strips. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like this thing is actually blocking some of our light. So let's scoot it. There we go. Well, I continue to stir it and block the light anyway. You know, like you do. Like you do. That was the sound of a dog desperately trying to scamper out of my way. What do you mean professional in quotes? By the time I stopped being a cook, I had achieved the rank of pastry chef. It's not something you do casually. To set up an entire pastry department in a place that had never had one before. I'm still proud of that. Even if it was for, like, shitty people and or at least one mad drug addict who was the head chef. That yeah, was a fucking weird place to work, I tell you what. Okay, I'm doing this with tongs because I want to sort of get all of the meat sort of separated out so that it's all cooking at least a little bit. Okay. Um, well, I'll flip this back over to the side that didn't have meat on it. Well, we're gonna need more garlic and we're gonna need more onions because of course we are, we're cooking what this is all about, isn't it? Gotta have those delicious, delicious aromatics that, frankly, I probably use too much of, but whatever. It's fine. It's totally fine. There will not be any issues, I'm sure. It will be perfect. That feeling is encouraging me to talk to myself even more because I can't see chat all the time and I feel weird not talking, so I just keep talking, even if I don't know what the hell chat is feeling. If chat's feeling like they want to bludgeon me upside the head for never not talking. Hush up, trash can. I'm putting stuff in you in a minute. There we go. Oh, hush. Ooh, not the best onion, but okay. Okay. Ooh, doo -doo -doo. I'm still proud, though, that when uh, Serpent and Joe Kim were here, that they were like, yeah, your knife skills are not that bad. And I was like, that's good, because it's been a while. Cooking makes you talk to yourself anyway. That's good. Here, let's cut back to the wide shot, since I'm doing shit here, and the meat's just sort of cooking on low. Also, hey, Nate. Welcome, friend. 
Sorry, chat is um, it weird for me to see sometimes because I have to be over here and it's on this computer and I feel weird. Uh, da -da -da. Oh, that was totally a legitimate issue we had, Nate. Uh, well, okay, not specifically that one. The head chef for that place where I was the pastry chef, at one point he just vanished because um, we were in the middle of fuck nowhere. So he just vanished for like a week and a half, uh, came back with the company rental car that he was using because he wasn't from the state, with a woman who he claimed was a friend that no one had ever seen or heard of before, uh, and with what the GM later determined were uh, meth pipe cherries all over the company rental car. So yeah, that was a fucking weird experience. That was like the one time Haley and I were in the same place at the same time. There we go. I probably should have actually not done this as like the thin onion bit. Whatever. Sorry, we've now moved on to the part of the show where I'm coming up with a recipe on the fly, which I'm okay at, but means that things will be a lot less consistent now. Because I'm just coming up with a beef stroganoff recipe out of nowhere? Decent chance it'll probably be too salty, because that's sort of what happens when I do that, but well, we'll find out. Hey, great Googly Moogly, Moogly, welcome to the channel. And that kids is how I met your mother. No, no, no. Haley and I had already been dating by that point. Um, that was actually a... Th contract that I had through my workplace at the time and Haley didn't have a job for that summer so we we're just like yeah okay they need two people they want to do a pastry program and they expect to deal with a whole bunch of like weird dietary issues and that's sort of what Haley was trained for so it's like yeah we'll get Haley in technically she worked for me but we did a lot of the planning together anyway, so because eh. it was I was an employee of the company already, so she was like a temporary hire on. So we were also the only people who didn't live on site. We drove in because everyone else was from out of state, and it was far enough that the drive was not fun, but it was so much better than staying on site. This beef is almost cooked through. I'm actually probably going to pull it now because I don't want it to overcook. Um, and get too, like, tough. The cat just is sitting on that chair and popping up whenever he can. He made beef stroganoff last week. Beef stroganoff is so good. It's so good. I love it. I don't make it as much as I wish I did. So I'm just going to move all of our... Actually, I guess I should cut over to the cooktop cam for y'all. I'm just going to transition all of this, uh, all of these beef strips over to a plate so I can get rid of this. Because this is not fat. Most of this is not fat, so it wouldn't be super helpful for us to save it. Most of this is just water that was still inside the partially frozen beef. Or uh, water that was just inside the beef anyway. So saving this is not super helpful. Uh, I'll miss a little bit more, but not enough to save them. So, I'm going to dump these real quick. There we go. Wash the rest of it out. Um, what do we want to do this with? I'm thinking butter. Then again, we've already done a little bit of butter. Let's get a different flavor in here. Um, uh, no, fuck it. Let's do it with butter. Whenever I figure out where I sit that, the butter is over here. The butter is over here. I know you can't all see me. I'm just sort of circling weirdly. I'm also actively trying to not think about the lapel because I keep accidentally bumping it with my chin. And I feel, hey, let's go self-conscious about that. Because I haven't worn a lapel mic in a very long time. Um, oh, good. The planes have found me. If you are not, if you're new to the stream, you wouldn't know that uh, I used to live right by the Colorado Air Force Base. 
and that we had a real, we just sort of had a game about every time the damn streamed, they would fly overhead, somehow, always, every time. And that hasn't been happening lately, because uh, I've moved a little farther away, not that much farther away, but it just hasn't been happening, and it was so nice. Okay. So we've got this going. God, I'm gonna have to come up with a recipe for what I did here, aren't I? Because if you're new to the stream, you can do the exclamation point uh, recipe, and Loratron will give you the actual recipe we've been using. Well, three recipes. And this one just says, like, I have beef. I don't know what I'm doing with it. So we recently decided. <laughs> here you thought the plot twist was that Haley was the mysterious meth woman? No. No. Not even kind of. Okay, let's get the onions in. Pardon me as I just accidentally throw some onions onto the cooktop. Come here. All of you get in there. Get in there with your families. Hang on, there's this one right behind the pan that I don't want to lose. Okay. Fortunately, I've now used all of the good utensils, so we're going with the weird plastic silicon thing. So once again, we're doing a sweat here. Um, this is a little bit more of a saute, but it's, it's basically going to end up being a sweat anyway, so we still want some salt here to help extract some more of the moisture from these onions. And time to also get the garlic going as well. Biff Wellington, that is a very different thing. Mostly because I think Biff Wellington is somehow cooking Biff inside puff pastry. Also, now I want... Now I want Beef Wellington. <laughs> no, no, the Pokemon music is on the start stream. Actually, here. Like, I can actually throw to that. Yeah, this is Pokemon music here. This is, uh... This is a cover of the battle music with Red from... Uh, Pokemon Gold and Silver. Done by, who is it? Yeah, Cyril the Wolf. Sorry, I just wanted to throw to that because I like doing that. Erf. Also because it dis doesn't default to muting me, so... Eh. Yeah, I believe that's... It's either Elite Four or... I'm pretty sure, though, it's the, the Mount Silver battle music for when you run into red in Pokemon Silver and Gold. Admittedly, that was the origin, and then someone on... Cyril the Wolf took it on uh, Remix and tweaked it. Well, remixed it. However the hell you want to say I don't know how you're supposed to describe that. Okay. Do I want one more? No, we don't need more garlic. <laughs> Makes you watch Back to the Future. Okay, I'll be honest. I've watched Back to the Future. It's been a while. It's been a fucking while. It has been a very long while since I watched Back to the Future. Hell, I've watched Back to the Future. I own at least one of them. Um, before my father passed, he had a thing where basically every holiday wherein he could give gifts, his gift to me was always more movies. So I've got DVD and Blu-ray copies of a whole lot of movies. Um, and I know he gave me Back to the Future 1. I don't remember if I have any of the other ones. And, oh yeah, there's definitely going to be mushrooms too. I just have them already cut. cut. Um, those actually should go in now. You're totally right. So let me grab those out. Haley's going to be so pissed because I think she bought these for something and I'm stealing them. Then again, they're in here with like an overripe squash and some tomato cherries. So she also didn't punch holes in it, so these probably don't have much time left to them. Good thing I'm using them now! Here. I'm opening a plastic container, you twits. Mmm, yes, the brick of mushrooms. Actually, these are probably big enough. I should have cut them down a little bit. Oh, well! Here, so you all can see the unholy abomination I just created. I'm so sorry. Ooh, there's a stem in there. Let's get that out. That's going to be too woody. Actually, there's most of these... Why do all these have stems? I mean, they don't all, but why do a bunch of these have stems? You don't 
Leave the stems on, you bastards. What's the point of buying a pre-cut mushroom if they leave the stems on? It's like, that's most of the work of prepping mushrooms, is taking the fucking stems off. Okay, that is just a stem. Hang on, one more check through. Okay, I think I got all of them. Oh god, the onions smell good. Oop, wait, there's another one. Stem. There we go, that would have been bad. Okay, I think that's everything. Nope. I'm going to keep saying that, because every time I say that, I see a new one. Okay, that. Oh, oh, yep. See? Every time I say it, or think about saying it, I see a new stem. Last one. Nope, shit, saw another one. God damn it. There's definitely a stem in here for basically every single mushroom. This is so dumb. Like, these are wonderful, large shiitake mushrooms. But they didn't take off the fucking stems? Why would you even cut them then? Okay. Nope. Thought about it. Thought about saying it. Thought about fucking saying it. Come on. So the reason why I'm pulling off the stems, if you're not familiar with mushrooms, is that the stems tend to be extremely woody. Um, which is not a pleasant thing to always bite into. You can cook them down and reduce the woodiness, but they'll never be quite as good as the rest of the shiitake. Hey, Okina... Uh, Alagaz, why the hell can't I say your name when I'm trying to say it rapidly? Okay, I will say, now that I've got this whole remote control thing working... Oh, it's so nice. It's so nice. Okay. Lazy way to mince the garlic. <laughs> Again, it would totally be safer to do this with a bench scraper, which I have, but I don't want to get more tools dirty because I've been cooking for two, um, two and a half hours already. So, yeah. Wrong kind of mushroom for any sort of meme, I think, but sure. Dead mouse? What the hell does dead mouse have to do with mushrooms? So I'm just trying to get these as finely chopped as possible so that they will nicely mix in with everything else we've got in there. Everything. Everything we're doing today is somehow going to accidentally turn out to be cream-based, because I'm going to have to add milk to this, too. Okay, anything else? There we go. Nope, you can just keep trying to fall off. Get in the pot. Get in the pot. There we go. Except now my hands are covered in garlic, so that's fun. I'll probably have to do something to remove the garlic smell, but... Since you all can't smell, it doesn't matter. Ha ha! Yeah, two, two hours, 16 minutes? Okay, yeah. Because I started a bit later than I meant to. Ah. I mean, upside, this computer is now almost fully charged from starting it. No power, so that's good. Um, I should have brought some water so that I have something besides coffee to be drinking. Good boy, come on. Trash can. Um, because I need to taste our soup again. Huh? Hey, Luna! I feel like it still needs more salt. Hmm. I'm gonna let this continue to cook down a little bit more. So, I could hear that. There's a decent chance that the rest of y'all might not have actually heard that techno line. Because it's playing on the computer that I'm technically streaming off of, but I think the audio is muted? Or is coming out of a different speaker. So, if you heard it, you picked it up on the lapel mic, <laughs> which I don't think you did. I... yes, I totally am losing frames now. What the fuck? Why am I suddenly dropping all the frames? God damn it. Herf! <sighs> yeah, out of nowhere I just started dropping frames. Okay. You done? 
And now it's inexplicably done. Okay. Uh, yes, Stark, that is the plan. Oh. You pissing jackass. Um, Apex Legends decided to... Sorry, Origin decided to update Apex Legends. That's why I was dropping a bunch of frames. Um, so let me clear out a whole bunch of stuff to make sure nothing else is going on, too. Close that, close that. Um, that's not even playing the right thing. Um, you can get the full thing with uh, exclamation point recipe. Right now, we are cooking the thing that isn't on that. Okay, I'm still occasionally dropping frames, but it's much more minor. Ooh, no, no it's not. Why is my... Cosmo, no! Okay, that looks better. Okay. Okay. Uh, yes, sorry about that, Stark. There's a um, one second delay on my audio, which I forgot because the IP cameras don't have um, don't have perfect sync, so they're like a second. They're like 1.4 seconds behind real time. So the mic has a delay and I don't compensate for it all the time if I have to do something like, I'm killing the stream. So yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we made some uh, beef stroganoff. We've got, this is probably done now. Um, we made some roasted Brussels sprouts. All right, we're making beef stroganoff. And then we also made some butternut squash soup. Yeah, look at these. Hang on. Pardon me while I cut to the uh, cooktop cam so I can show you these. Look at these fucking beauties. Look at them. They're delicious. Look at that. Look at them. Oh my god, they're amazing. Oh, they're gonna be so good. They're gonna be so good. Okay, before I go for the, the big blender. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, before I go for the uh, blender, which is up there, please remind me that I put the Brussels sprouts up here to cool. So, I might forget. Rotted fish is not real. Look, that's only one kind of Norwegian food. They've got plenty of real food, too. Okay. So, like I said, we're making this beef stroganoff. We've mostly got... I'd like to get these mushrooms cooked down a little bit more, but I think it's going to be okay. Ba -ba. Alephcat is being mean. Alephcat is being mean. Sorry, I couldn't remember where the lapel mic was. Um, so yeah, I'd like to get these mushrooms cooked down a little bit more, but it's probably time to start adding some more stuff to this. So, because this was not planned for, we're going to be going with a relatively lazy base of uh, some cream of potato, because normally you use cream of mushroom, but we've already got mushrooms in it. I also don't have cream of mushroom. Uh, so we're going with cream of potato instead. Um, but yeah, also we should bring the temp down on this a little bit. Can you all hear, can you hear that? Like that delicious sizzling sound? Which, thank God, like leaning with my collarbone forward, it looks very strange. Okay. You know, I think it's about time to uh, also introduce our wonderful thing to... Mm. We prefer cooked calf's head over here. That's terrifying. Oh, right. I forgot the cream of mushroom soup is also, like, chunky AF. So, this is the other reason why I want to have this on, like, lower heat, because the shit is chunky. And we don't necessarily want to burn it before we can get uh, all of it out. Yeah, sorry, I'm a little, holding it a little bit too high. There we go. So yeah, I'm going to move this off the heat a little bit. Um, 
Yeah, there we go. Whoop, that's not all of it. Come here. Come here. Okay, there we go. That's all of it. Now we're going to use this as our measurement for how much milk we're doing as well. And don't worry, those burners aren't actually blue or purple or the color you're seeing them. That's just because the IP cameras have uh, infrared built in, so it sees that as a very strange thing. There's our milk. Okay, so let's bring this back over to the heat. We'll reintroduce our meat as well, just so that it has time to pick up some of this flavor. Uh, and now comes the slow part, where we're just going to be adjusting for flavor and such. Ever tried adding just a bee wee bit of apple to that? Not this recipe, no, but I know that apple goes pretty well in a lot of stuff. I did mean to actually do some apple in... I thought about doing some apple in the uh, butternut squash recipe, but kind of decided against it just because I didn't want to do, too anything, do anything too weird with it. This is going to be a very chunky beef stroganoff, and I'm okay with that. But mostly right now we need to actually heat this up so that, of all things, the cream of uh, potato can actually loosen up a bit. Okay. What the hell is clicking? Oh, it's computer. Okay. Yeah, that would be very nice, actually. Um, but we don't have any apples right now, so that would be the other downside of there. Okay. Where's that step stool? Let's cut over to the wide shot while I go get our... Whoop. I remembered. I remembered that there's a hot thing right there. It's just that I need to get our stupid giant blender. There we go. Ugh! Our stupid giant blender that was very high up. Ugh. One day. That's an ice cream machine back there. One day I will use that on stream. I legitimately can't wait for that. It was a wedding present, actually, from Haley's boss. Yeah, it would make it a little bit more of a stew, but beef stroganoff is kind of a stew anyway. Um, it's just that, like it, like many other stews I was saying, you don't necessarily want to make it through stewing because it's just not good. It's just not good if you make it through stewing because stewing is just not good. Almost every stew is improved by instead braising the ingredients instead of stewing them. Do do do. This poor fucking plug has everything in use right now. Actually, not everything, but still. Everything sounds more impressive than 80-ish percent. Pumpkin cream soup? Oh, yes. Mushroom stew is delicious. Oof. As a kid, I didn't like mushrooms, so I just never ate them that much. But now that I've learned that mushrooms are fucking grand, I, I eat them in a lot more things. Okay. Come here, Mr. Butternut Squash. You're going to get into this mixing bowl. Mixer bowl? Mixer bowl. Do, do, do. I wish I had a funnel for this. It would be less dangerous. There we go. Yeah, it's chunky soup, but it's okay. Yeah, that's actually above the max fill line. So we're going to pull some of this out, which I'm going to be sad about, but worst case, we'll just add it back in later. Um, ah, no, that's perfectly fine if you don't like pumpkin. I mean, part of my issue with pumpkin has always been that... Pumpkin is fine. Pumpkin is a massive pain in the ass to use, so if anyone's using pumpkin, they're almost always using that, like, desiccated... Well, it's not actually desiccated, but that canned stuff. There we go. Yeah, that's up to the max liquid. Hot! That was hot, but it was delicious. I had the lid. Where'd I put the lid? I'm actually thinking of just saving this to add back into it. I had a lid. Does anyone see where ca Directly in front of me. Okay. Uh, I'm actually going to turn off the mic for this, because I'm expecting it to be rather loud. So just a warning. I'm going to...
And I'm back. There we go. Sorry, I was assuming that would be a little bit too loud and I didn't necessarily want to blow out anyone's eardrums or anything. It actually wasn't that loud, but still. Ooh, but now it doesn't want to let go of the lid. That's fun. <sighs> Hang on. Because I can't find out if the texture's right if the lid won't let go. Soup works as an adhesive. Many soups do work as an adhesive. In this case, it's actually just that the uh, heat has caused the lid to expand a bit. So, there we go. Also, created a vacuum. So, remove the vacuum by opening a little corner bit, and it's much better. Okay. Ooh, that texture is much, much nicer. Honestly, I think that's pretty solid. Like, a little bit buttery. Yes, ninja blood. God damn it. A little bit buttery, a little bit, like, nutty. Nutmeg. That's what I need. Right. I never added any nutmeg. I'm currently getting a phone call from a spam number. Um, I don't know if we have any nutmeg. How do we not... Why is this even here? It's just a box. It's just a fucking box with a single can of Dr. Pepper in it. Um, because we probably have nutmeg on this carousel thing, but I don't necessarily want to be using that nutmeg. Wow, do we not even have cinnamon? Oh wait, if we do it, it's in this drawer, right. Okay, let's see here. Yeah, we've got pre-ground cinnamon, or nutmeg, which... Not the best, but it'll do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to add a bit of nutmeg, because we're supposed to. Um, and I totally forgot. And a bit of cinnamon. Because I want to. Oh, wow. That, that should not still have that smell. That's actually really good. I'm just, it shouldn't. Okay. So nutmeg, we'll do a dash of cinnamon, maybe a little bit more blackstrap molasses, we'll see. Because I think that added a really nice flavor to it. Which means I have to update the recipe we're using, but whatever. Come on. There we go. Ah, uh, yeah, let's do a titch more blackstrap. There we go. That's like another probably half tablespoon. Anyone actually remember how much I said that I've added? Because I think that puts me at like two tablespoons total now. I think that's two tablespoons total. I can't believe I forgot the nutmeg. God, that would have been so dumb. Gonna kill the sound again just to... I'm really afraid this would be really loud. So, give me a minute. should try is uh, salmon, potatoes, carrots, and creme fraiche. Oh, it's so good. Um, the reason why I don't actually tend to do a lot of seafood cooking is because Haley doesn't love seafood. So it's just not something I do a ton of. Okay, we don't need to break a vacuum again, so that's good. How are you now? You seem to have heated up, which is impressive. Oh, okay. Yeah, yep, yep. The cinnamon and nutmeg was definitely what it needed. That's so much better. That's so much better. Okay, I can't believe I forgot the cinnamon and nutmeg. Oh, that was close to real dumb. So, I think I'm going to leave this bit, which is the still, like, chunky stuff, and just sort of mix it in, so that we'll get, not necessarily two textures, but a, a, a recipe in between, or, like, a texture sort of in between. It'll still be on this much smooth, like, here, let me come over with this to chat. Like, this is so smooth now. Like, this is just so smooth. Um, and this way we'll get a little bit more texture to it, but not too much. Not too much. 
Um, uh, if you do the recipe correctly, even someone with seafood... So, that's never been the issue, though, is just that Haley makes a lot of stuff. And Haley has tried everything... Like, Haley will always try everything at least once. She doesn't like the texture of most seafood. It has less to do with um, taste and just that the texture has never been for her. And that's okay. Her okay, you're just going straight into the dishwasher because I'm lazy. Mr. Trash Can, I... Back up. Thank you. It's like, I know there's enough space. Fuck you. That was my Amazon device saying that I'm welcome for something. And it scared the flying fuck out of me. I don't know what I said that she interpreted as being directed at her, but... That's like the fourth time that's happened this stream, and this has only been going for almost three hours. She's just listening, waiting to fuck with me for some reason. I'm also trying to be a little bit better about getting ahead of the game and putting stuff in the dishwasher, so... Yeah, that's pretty much everything that I can get in there right now. Okay. My expensive thing. Personal space, Mr. Trash Can. Personal space. If you have vanilla, you should add a wee bit. Ooh, yes. Um, which of our 8 million probable kinds of vanilla should I be using, though? Oh. This is starting to get a nice texture to it. Um, let's see. I, I really should not be allowed to open this because there's so much in here and every time I open it I go, but I could add that too. And shut up, idiot. Because my first reaction was, oh fuck, we've got 100% like real maple syrup. I could have added that. No, no, we did blackstrap, fills the same void. Where is our vanilla? That's the rum extract. Um, that's the balsamic plant. It should be in here. It should be, but that's Irish flavored syrup. Okay, that's weird. This is all of the vinegars. Hmm. 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 He says, continuing to make dumb noises while trying to find a thing. And now becoming self-conscious because I'm leaning over and going, shit, my butt might be in shot in no other part of me. That seems weird. <sighs> Isn't it fun being self-conscious yet also on camera? It's very weird. Where is all of our vanilla? It might be in here. I'm just checking here first because if I check up there, it's going to be in here. But I think it's up there. Irish syrup tastes different from normal syrup. I mean, yeah. Irish cream. Um, it's just a weird label to see. I have no idea where the hell our vanilla is. Huh. I guess this is not getting vanilla then. Weird. Still, let's cut over to the cooktop pan because this is probably about where it needs to be. Like now it's time to really start focusing on what we want to season this with. Um, because of the starch content, this should thicken up as it cools down. Because that's always the weird thing you have to deal with when cooking with starches, is that they tend to thicken as they cool, not as they cook. So you can't trust them as much as you would probably want to. Actually, that's kind of solid. Um, I do still want to add, because I don't have sour cream, I'm going to go with uh, cream cheese for this. It needs pepper, for sure. Um, just a titch more salt, but not much. Like, not even a teaspoon, just like that. Um, it just has no pepper to it. Uh, because it has alcohol in it. Uh, no, though, that's extract, but yes. Because it's Irish, obviously, it has alcohol in it. Um, but yeah, I'm going to add a little bit of cream cheese because it's going to fill the same void-ish that uh, sour cream would fill. 
Where is the vanilla? That's going to annoy me. How much, how much cream cheese is left in here? Um, shit. I was hoping I'd finally get rid, get to get rid of this weird block of cream cheese, but nope. Well, thanks for sticking around, Serpent. Hope you had fun. And for anyone who's actually here for gaming, don't worry, there will be a gaming stream tonight. Basically, once this is done and once I've got cleaned up, we're going to do uh, Hollow Knight. But thanks for sticking around, Serpent. Um, what the fuck is the vanilla? Because we've got a big thing of vanilla. It's going to drive me nuts if I don't find it. Ah, good. I accidentally answered Serpent's question, I think, before it was asked. At least on my end, before it was asked. Curse you, chat delay. Also, this mic being delayed. Shut up. This actually, I think, is going to be pretty solid, considering I didn't know what we were doing with the beef before the stream started. Um, ask Kaylee about what? Oh, yeah, the issue is I don't know if she'll be able to respond right now. Oop, that's the wrong drawer. <laughs> um, now to do some quick math. How much rice do we need for this? In case anyone hasn't realized this yet, I'm not good at quick math, so this might not be that quick. We're gonna do brown rice. Hey, Killer Queen! Yep, the doggo keeps popping in, because he's a lovely idiot. Um, no, not all of it. Like, this is a full bag of brown rice. We don't need all of it. Uh, da -da -da -da. You don't have your conversion ratio, because I don't remember how much it converts up by. <laughs> Hi, cat. Here, let's cut over to the wide shot since Kelsvers decided to join me. Nah, nah, nah. Yeah, it's I'm. It's more that I'm trying to do a lot of this meal prep for like ahead of time, so I'm thinking like cup and a half, cup and a half. So three cups of uh, no, yeah, yeah, cup and a half, three cups of water. Should be enough rice for both of us. It's brown rice, so technically healthier. Fun thing, it's not actually healthier. Um, brown rice, the only reason why brown rice is considered better for you is because brown rice is unhulled rice, which means it still has the bran coating on it, which means it's higher in insoluble fiber, which technically is good for you, but it's not a nutrient. It's actually just better for like cleaning out your GI tract. <laughs> um, so it's like good for you, but it's not that great for you. And it's actually a thing that, um, okay, I'm gonna say this real quick before I go on this topic. There is a difference between a dietitian and a nutritionist, and it's like the same difference as a chiropractor saying that they're a doctor. They don't have a doctorate. So even though dietitian sounds like a really dumb title, at least in the States and many other countries, Nutritionist means nothing as a job title. If they are not a registered dietitian, they literally have, there's no way of proving that they have been certified as actually knowing what's good for you. So just be warned about that. But uh, it's why dietitians and nutritionists tend to suggest that people with uh, serious or significant uh, celiac disease, especially if it's celiac that they didn't realize they had for a long time, will encourage them to stop uh, eating things like brown rice because it has uh, dietary, f uh, it has insoluble dietary fiber in, in it, which exacerbates uh, the celiac disease because what celiac does is destroy a lot of the parts of your GI tract that usually stuff like um, non-digestible dietary fiber is supposed to clean out. But since it's already damaged by you having celiac and having eaten wheat and not realizing it actually hurts you more so uh we didn't add beef stock it's uh wait what do you mean i think it says chicken stock in one of the recipes and we use chicken stock and a bit of milk instead uh, if you mean the beef stroganoff we actually didn't do any stock at all we used uh, cream of mushroom soup, because it's what I happen to have. 
not a fan of rice, so doesn't care. Fair. I'm just trying to make it clear that like there are legitimate reasons for people to not have brown rice or white rice. I'm just like, eh. Just want to make it clear that it's not actually healthier for you. It's just different. Like, if you need more fiber in your diet, brown rice, and you already like rice, then brown rice is a solid choice. If you don't, then brown rice isn't going to be helping you at all. Um, but yeah, sorry, uh, great googly moogly. You can type in uh, exclamation point recipe. Uh, and you can get all of the recipes that we made, except for this beef stroganoff, because this beef stroganoff behind me is... Uh, sort of a spur of the moment thing because we had the beef. So this is like cream of potato with milk and we had uh, shiitake mushrooms, onions, garlic. There's a bit of cream cheese in this for like a sour twang. Um, we're mostly just trying to get that to cook down right now and that's then this will be ready. Um, then for the other things we made, we've got this, which is our butternut squash soup which we did with uh, chicken stock, blackstrap molasses, finally remembered to add the cinnamon and nutmeg. Um, uh, Luna really wants us to add shredded apple to the beef stroganoff, which I'm kind of okay with not doing. Um, but yeah, it's like butternut squash, onions, carrots, garlic, cinnamon, nutmeg. If I could remember where the fuck the vanilla was, <laughs> I'd add that. Um, but yeah. I'm honestly pretty happy with it. It's it's really solid now that I've remembered. Right, it needed nutmeg and cinnamon, you twit. So now we're just doing the uh, rice, and we'll be ready, basically. Oh yes, and then I totally forgot. There's the Brussels sprouts that are currently on top of the fridge. I forgot about that. Um, those are probably done as well. And while I, my, my inner former cook desperately wants me to get everything onto serving trays and shit, since I know that I'm the only one who's going to be eating them for a while, I'm like, I should actually just get like some served up onto a pan that I want to eat them on, and then get the rest onto uh, like storage. That's the wrong burner. This burner. So, yeah. Okay, let's taste this again to see how this one's doing. Oh, that's really good. I don't... There, I checked. The vanilla is not just standing on the... There's a non zero chance this might be vanilla. Shut up. Oh, that's not vanilla! <laughs> okay! <laughs> that's not vanilla! Not 100% sure what it is, but it's not vanilla. <laughs> Um, that is some kind of vinegar. I don't know what kind of vinegar it is, but it's not vanilla. <laughs> oh, okay. That, that kicked my nostrils ass really quickly. Oh, that reminds me of a thing I might want to make, actually. Not today, don't worry. Um, there's a, there's a, I think it's actually vegan. There's a vegan, uh, pseudo hot dog thing that uh, was done on one episode of Good Eats. I'm still looking for the vanilla. Um, that I fucking love and it's great. But um, essentially what you do is you freeze. With that reaction, you assume it would be lighter fluid. It's more than, so you know why chemists and anyone who's taken high school chemistry is taught to do that like wafting thing? So it's just that I stuck my face in and went vanilla? Oh no! I didn't do the wafting. I should have wafted, as my high school chemistry taught me. Fun thing, I was taught high school chemistry by a man who had previously uh, been, uh, and actually was still supposed to be forbidden from teaching in my district because he worked for the other high school and had been selling, or not selling, he'd been part of a ring that was importing heroin uh, into uh, the continental United States. Uh, from Hawaii, I want to say. 
and he wasn't supposed to be teaching, and no one could ever explain why the hell he was allowed to be teaching at this school, because the reason why he wasn't allowed to teach is... I found the vanilla. Uh, is because he got caught doing that while working at the other high school. Found the vanilla. Yeah, no, not making drugs, smuggling drugs. Okay, that's like two teaspoons? Two teaspoons of uh, vanilla? Do, do, do. Okay. Lid? Lid. There's lid. We don't want to lose the lid. That's important. Lid stops me from being entirely coated in, well, stuff. Okay. Yeah, I believe I'm a trained cook. I know what I'm doing. Also, hey, I'm not going to mute it this time. I'll just lean them. Lean the mic away. There we go. So the reason why I couldn't find it is because I'm blind. Not because it was like hiding or something, I'm just blind. It's also like, yeah, a very big thing of Madagascar vanilla. Madagascar bourbon pure vanilla extract. Warning, do not buy Mexican vanilla extract. Just in general, just no. They don't actually have as many rules and registrations about what uh, needs to go into it to be called vanilla extract. In the States, stuff that is vanilla extract has to be very specifically just vanilla beans that were effectively soaked in alcohol for a long period of time. Not so much Mexican vanilla. Which means that uh, one of the gold standards for vanilla in the States is almost always Madagascar and Indonesia. They usually um, if I recall correctly, Indonesian beans are more inconsistent. Oliver, stop it. Sorry, he's doing a, like, diggy thing into a chair. Uh, da -da -da -da, this holds eight cups. Well, shit. Eight cups is exactly how much is currently in the mixer. Blender, whatever. Uh, which means that this part won't fit. I'm going to start with this part, actually. And accept that it won't all fit. Okay, this is done. So I'll pour most of this in here, and the rest will be my lunch. Oh, gurgle, gurgle, gurgle. Or it'll all totally fit and I'll be deeply confused because that's not how volumetric things should work, but okay. Oh, yeah, the vanilla helped. Vanilla was very good. Oh, needs a little bit more salt to counteract the vanilla, but uh, that's an easy thing to add. It's still warm enough that the salt will melt. And a squidge more pepper, but not much, like two grains. He says as he does three grains because I'm thick. Not like with two C's, just thick like an idiot. <laughs> hmm? You forgot Blender... This mass has been... Well, no, no, I was looking at the actual, like, measurement. Like, because there's a volumetric thing on it, so it's like that... That should be eight cups, but okay. I guess it's because of the... This technically goes over eight cups, so, yeah. Oh, my God. Okay, yep, that's good. That's very good. Okay. So, that can stay right here. Because that's done. Yeah, we're actually just trying to get the fucking salty water with rice in it to boil and we'll be good. Okay. I mean, that basically means we're done, so I guess, hey, I'm here to talk with chat now. And or clean shit up, but yeah. Oh. Yeah, the, the only issue really with adding the um, vanilla is that it adds yet another flavor to compete with everything else that's in it, which means we need a little bit more salt to bring out all the other flavors, but it's not bad. 
Um, okay. Have you cooled? You have. Okay. Oh, these beautiful, beautiful boys are wonderful Brussels sprouts. God, these came out way better than I was expecting them to. I'm, I'm now going to forever stand by that strategy of uh, letting the Brussels sprouts just sort of, here, I'm coming over to the camera with it, just letting the Brussels sprouts sort of sit in the bacon fat a little bit before baking it. Oh, look at that, it's beautiful. Oh, come here, I just want one. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And I will maintain, this is like the one place where I still think powdered garlic powder or granulated garlic is gonna be better than normal garlic. <laughs> oh, so good. So I guess now I'm just sort of like talking to the chat, packing all the stuff up. Ugh. So how's everyone doing on this Friday, hopefully, now that you're done with work? I, think, I mean, I guess, Odinson, you're not done with work because you were eating lunch, so you're probably not done yet. Hmm? Over the bowl was a bag of holding, but only had a pocket dimension the volume of one cup. God damn it. They overflay... Do they? I thought if a bag of holding overflowed, they just sort of like stuff popped out or like stuck out. Oh, you should probably figure that out, Luna, if it's only if you've only got an hour. Oh, is that where I'm so sorry, Killer Queen. I haven't watched any JoJo, so I wasn't aware that that's where your name came from. Made a bag of holding with a six by six by six room with an eight foot pole in it. That's deeply confusing, but okay. Okay, good. The rice is coming to a boil, so that'll be done soon. Um, I guess we should find containers for all these things. Because, I mean, I'm gonna just have it on a plate, but... I should do a big plate. I haven't eaten yet today. I should do a big plate gonna not use the I should be I should also be using the plate that looks better on camera but whatever you can't ever get the pull out without breaking it no oh. <laughs> excuse me good lord um, and now I'm just gonna repeatedly hiccup until I die apparently okay um, and use every utensil we own. Because nothing gets stuff off of a flat sheet pan quite like a spatula. Okay. I think that's... So here's the issue. These are the one vegetable that I will eat too much of, so I'm not going to fill up this plate too much. Or else I legitimately would just gorge myself on Brussels sprouts. Like, I don't dislike a lot of vegetables, but Brussels sprouts are the one that I'm just like, yes. Put it all in my face right now. I will take it all, please. Okay, so we'll get the rest of these in a Tupperware. That thing's basically already like sealed up nicely. See you, Odinson. Thanks for stopping by during your lunch break, friend. Hope the rest of your day's okay. Um. Oh no. I feel like you're all talking about the. Uh, now what happens is you're not going to be happy about it. Oh, no. The bag rejects the item and overfills it, or the pocket dimension itself breaks, disposing... See, I've... I feel like a lot of that sort of depends on how your DM wants to run a bag of holding. One of the best ones I've ever heard, though, was someone who, for some reason, tried to put a, a goblin in a bag... Oh, God. Sorry, that bacon had a bunch of salt in it. It's delicious. Um... Tried to put a goblin in a bag of holding and uh, forgot that they were also storing all of their weapons and shit in the bag of holding. And their plan was that, well, the bag of holding, hang on. The bag of holding only contains like 10 minutes of air, so he'll suffocate and probably get knocked out before dying. So once he's knocked out, we'll pull him out. And, eh. 
but they forgot that all their weapons were in there. So the goblin, like, started taking their weapons and trying to, like, fight his way out of the bag of holding and punctured the pocket dimension. So the DM's read on this, and this is apparently a DM who was known for doing stuff like this, was that, okay, fine, goblin punch, punctures bag of holding, him, him and everything else in the bag of holding goes away into somewhere. And they're just like, well, shit, that's all of our stuff gone. The DM then ran a different campaign with a bunch of other people who were not connected. Um, also, really quickly, that's why I use parchment paper. It's already clean. I'm done. Uh, a bunch of other people who weren't aware of this goblin or his story or anything, uh, or at least beforehand, and ran them in a campaign where it's basically like this weird interdimensional, like, skipping around thing where they're just like, one of their primary contacts was this goblin and they were doing mostly work for him. So near the end of the other player's campaign, who the goblin originally came from, um, in the middle of like their big bad boss fight, the goblin who they accidentally sent away to a different dimension, uh, because his campaign had been all about like dimension hopping, dimension hops into their uh, realm and goes, the fuck? You! And sees the guy who shoved him into the bag of holding initially and turned into like a double boss fight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That it, it, I feel like, again, it sort of depends on your DM's read on it, but I particularly like that one. It's just like it puncturing scatters whatever's inside it across all the planes. Or I guess depending on how, how your DM is running it across a select number of planes. But yeah, either way, it's sweet. Okay. I, as much as I want to, like, throw this beef stroganoff down on the plate, I want to wait until I have the, the rice ready to put it down, too. I'm, I'm actually really looking forward to this, because this has been a fun stream. I wasn't expecting this to be as much fun as it was. Because, honestly, I was kind of operating in the assumption that no one would be here. So it's like, yeah, I'll probably have like three-ish viewers and it's been bouncing between like seven and 11 most of the time. Well, six and 11. I'm just like, yes, I love it. I'm stealing this from Haley. I won't tell her. She's actually got a bunch of them, but still. There's a game once where you saw where the baddies or the heroes were scattered all over the plains and as a result, the big bad uh, pocket dimension breaking down. Ah, okay. Uh, rings up a mechanism to drop a bag of holding into a portable hole and make a mini nuke. You're a bad person, Elfcat. That's bad. Don't do that. So you obliterate an entire plane of existence. What the fuck? What did that entire plane of existence ever do to you? Also, I guess I should have a... Let's go for a little bowl. Because I don't need too much food. He says after acknowledging this is the first time I'm eating all day, but whatever. I don't need too much food. I don't know where we got this, but... This is really nice. I don't think I've ever used this uh, container before, much less with the lid. Uh, pour carefully. Hot. Hot. Ooh, hot but delicious. Oh. No, there's onions in this. You can't have any. I don't know if you can see him, but he's right here. Right here. Okay. You know that I can only hear that because it's way over there, right? Let's see. Hang on, I feel like I'm, there was a bunch of stuff that... Oh, no! I accidentally scrolled way too fast and way too far. Okay. You shouldn't be able to hear it. That's weird. Okay, question. What star are you going to pick for Pokemon Sun and Moon? Sword and Shield. Sun and Moon. God damn it. Okay. One, it depends entirely on their evolutions. Because you're going to spend a lot more evolutions and I haven't paid a ton. And we don't know yet. So I'll have to wait and see. Based just off of the starter forms we've seen. Um, 
I think Grookey is probably the most likely, just because, I don't know, it feels the most okay. Um, it's probably Score Bunny, because someone showed me a picture of, or not someone, um, Will Blanks retweeted a picture that someone had drawn of Score Bunny wearing the outfit of the main hero from Summer Wars, and I can't unsee it, and I would now die for that bunny, which sounds really dumb. Um. <laughs> See that hoopy guy cap? There's food I'm really nice for his towels. Shut up. Really? You're gonna make Hitchhiker's Guide jokes at me? You're gonna make fucking Hitchhiker's Guide jokes at me? What the hell, Olive Cat? Well, that's weird. You really shouldn't be able to hear the, uh, audio cues, because they should be coming through the wrong speakers for you to hear them, but, okay. This poor bowl is now filthy. Okay. Well, it's mostly clean now. Ugh. Yeah, I, I figured what you meant by the Mount Celestial thing, yeah. yeah. We now have so much pre-prepped food, it's actually awesome. Because it means that, ooh, that doesn't quite fit there. This is gonna, gonna have to go up a floor. <laughs> okay, you stack there, you stack there. Grab this one weird yogurt, move it down here. Oh god! The mic is probably echoing because I have my face inside a refrigerator. There we go. Just my face, not my whole body. Don't put your whole body inside a refrigerator, that's a bad idea. Okay. But yeah, probably Score Bunny, because uh, Score Bunny is fucking adorable. Um, I have a very bad feeling that if Scorbunny evolves, I'm going to hate its evolutions, just because it looks like it's going to be firefighting and we don't need another firefighting. Um, so if it's not firefighting, I'll be super happy, but I have a very bad feeling that I'm going to be the person who gets a Scorbunny and then never lets it evolve because it's adorable. <sighs> yeah, I also always pick the fire starters. I know it's going to be an athlete. I don't think being an athlete means it has to be a firefighting type, though. Because it's probably going to be like a soccer player. And I would argue that being a soccer player could make sense for it being, um... Uh, what's it called? Uh, steel type, because soccer, like, cleats, and the focus is already on its feet, so it could just be, like, pointy feet. Um... I don't think it's going to be a rugby player, because didn't already, it started by like playing around with a soccer ball. Um, and... I think it was Damasu was mentioning that apparently someone's already done some insanely uh, close, not close, but like deep analysis of the fucking 30 seconds of tra uh, trailer. Yeah. Uh, it's not going to be lacrosse, Luna. I can almost guarantee it will not be lacrosse, because lacrosse is, like, one of the few American-made sports that also never gets played anywhere. Because who the fuck remembers lacrosse? And since it's going to be a British Isles-focused uh, gen, doing lacrosse would make zero sense. Like, maybe rugby, but I doubt that they would transition between different sports, since they've already sort of implied it's soccer. I'm kind of interested to see what Sobble and Grookey evolve into, because they look adorable. So, eh. What's the ultra-British sport called, Ditton? I mean, football. They, It's it's mostly football slash soccer. Um, the three silly poles. I think you might be talking about cricket, but again, they've already shown that it's attached with soccer. So I don't think they're going to change that. Like any of the other Pokemon that you're usually tied to a sport or something don't change sport usually, or don't like change fundamentally. Because cricket would imply it being like tied to hands or like if anything's going to be tied to cricket, it's going to be Grookey because it's got like the stick. I'm still hoping that Grookey's going to be fire, or not fire, grass fighting because we don't see enough grass fighting and grass fighting's cool. I don't even know what the hell rounders is. No, no, it's, it's American uh, colleges where they play uh, Quidditch. No, we play, we play hockey here in the States, too. Like, Canadians play more of it, but we also play hockey. 
Actually, I think a non-zero amount of Amer like hockey is one of the few things that like Canadians and Americans actually sort of agree on. There aren't many, but that's one of them. Um. You call it baseball and play it with two hands? I mean, as opposed to what, cricket? Yeah. It's because cricket makes like no sense to us. Then again, it's because we don't we haven't learned any of the rules, but still. I'm done waiting and I'm going to start having some of this soup. Because it's fucking good. And now I have to update the recipe, but whatever. Mm. This could do with like a little bit of... Maybe like a sour cream garnish, but it's, it's solid. It's really good. Stop telling me that solid is bad. It is a good soup. No, no, I have to chain, look at the recipe, Luna. It doesn't include, like, the vanilla. It doesn't include the, the blackstrap molasses. I didn't have all the chicken stock I thought I had, so it includes two cups of milk instead of, so it's four cups of chicken stock and two cups of milk instead of the, um, uh, six cups of chicken stock it's supposed to be. Um, so there's a bunch of tweaks that I need to make to it, but... That's mostly for the VOD. I feel like I might be talking louder than I need to, since y'all are right here and that's weirding me out. I'm still trying to decide as well if I like this or... I'm going to go off camera for a minute. I'll be back. Um, which is to say I'm going to keep talking and might even become clearer because I'm walking by the computer, but whatever. Um, I'm trying to decide if I want to use this or uh, this setup has a second mic that comes with it and I feel like this one's clearer than the other so I like it more and the other one's I don't know it's not super big fan of it but it's another option so hey we have two options at least the other one is um less lapel mic and more I don't know obvious which I think is why I didn't like it this is one of these things that's like a wraparound thing mostly because it it fits weirdly because it's like you're supposed to wear it like this so that these hooks go over your ears. And, I don't know, it just feels, like, compressed and, like, this would be obvious. And th these things pressing against the side of my head would slowly drive me completely mad. So... Uh, no, I don't think lime would be a good garnish for this one, particularly. Um, there's plenty of soups I think are garnished great with lime. This one, not so much. It doesn't... Citrus would really unbalance this. Um... Because it's sweet, but it's not like a strong sweetness. It's not like a sweet being the primary flavor, which I think sour is a great offset to. It's more that it's like an earthy sweetness, that it's a secondary note. Because this is very, like, relaxed and nutty. Rice is all... Which is good, because I'm fucking hungry, damn it! Really fucking hungry. Sort of mellow sweet, that's why I'm trying to stick with like earthy and nutty. Because butternut squash is the base, and butternut squash has like a bit of sweetness to it, but only after some of the proteins in it, not proteins in it, some of the carbohydrates in it, specifically the starches, break down and are caramelized. And like the sugar that we added to this was mostly in the form of blackstrap molasses, which is also like a weird, not straight up sweet sweetness. Like, the closest thing to just a sweet element we added was the honey. And even that isn't, uh, like, sucrose, so just, like, table sugar sweet. It has other flavors to it. That's why I'm thinking, like, sour cream is just, like, it's sour, but it's not, like, a, it's not a refreshing sour. It's more of a, a, a distinct tonal and textural difference. Because I don't like... I, I feel like that would be a good thing, is just like, it, as opposed to s just like squeezing some lime on top, which would sort of unbalance it, sour cream doesn't necessarily have to like mix into it. You can just sort of like set it in the center as like a little dollop, and then just take bits of it as you're enjoying the soup. A dusting of nutmeg would also be pretty nice, yeah. That would actually be pretty solid without like unbalancing it then, yeah. I mean, I feel like a dusting of nutmeg would actually be fine. It's just that it, it might blend in a little bit with the soup. 
but eh, it would be fine. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's almost done. Just blueberries on top? Maybe? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, it would work with the cinnamon, but not so much with the nutmeg. I'm just waiting for the like, last bits of water to come out of this, and then we're good. Because there's just like a thin layer of water at the very bottom now. Actually, here, let me test it here, though. Mm, nope, not done. Definitely not done. I think this lid fits on this one. Okay. Let's add a little bit more water. Because the rice just isn't quite cooked all the way. So we're going to add a little bit more water. Put a lid on so it sort of steams itself a little bit. There we go. Um, actually, yeah, banana might go. Might work well. I feel weird about garnishing with something so, I don't know, simple? But yeah, maybe. I mean, at the same time, this soup do totally doesn't need a garnish. That was just me spitballing ideas. But yeah, sour cream, bananas. Um, could probably even just to like add, change the color up, you could probably just do like green onion slices. Like, cut on the bias. I'm hiccuping painfully now. Just because this is a dark orange soup, so you don't always want to garnish with... So the issue with banana is that the color would be a little off-putting. Because when you're talking about sour cream, it's a bright, clean color. With a banana, it's a little bit more... Um... Actually, yeah, I think lemongrass would also work pretty well. In... Um, but that's the issue with using the banana is that it's not quite a uh, clean color. Because it's like a slightly off uh, white. Um, but with like lemongrass or with green onion, you have like a bright clean green that would offset from the kind of dark brown of it. Dark brown orange. But yeah, these are, there are many options. It's like garnishing a drink. It's just because uh, you have to think about flavor and color. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that would definitely make it weird if you mushed up the banana. No, that would be bad. Like, you definitely need to do it as, like, banana slices resting on top. The problem is that, again, then that creates a really different textural thing. Um, yeah, that's why I think I would still stick with, like, the sour cream or uh, some sort of herbal garnish. Lemongrass, I think, it would be good. Green onions would be good because there's onions in the base. Mm. I guess you could do scallion, technically. Okay, technically scallion and green onion aren't the same, but they're very similar. You could probably get away with that. It just might be a little bit too big. So, yeah. I'm currently fighting with the... Uh, thing to try and get the rice to finish. I love how the cat is still hanging out in this chair. Here, cat, we can hang out together. I mean, I can't see chat when I do this, but here, I'll hang out with the cat. Oh, shit. Yeah. There we go. How much give to this? Not much, okay. You can't actually see the cat then, so. Sorry. <sighs> yeah. Um, I don't think cardamom... So that's always the issue with doing, like, a spice garnish, is that it just doesn't look that impressive. Like, again, if you have a really clean finish, which this soup doesn't super have, doing a spice garnish is interesting. So if you have, like, a foam on top, then spicing that looks cool, because it's a different contrasting thing. Unfortunately, if you were to do a spice garnish on top of this... It just looks like nothing. It just looks like it's stuff speckled on top. 
which can be okay, it just doesn't add anything visually. And only a little bit of cardamom, cardamom on top probably wouldn't add a ton to the flavor either. Hi, cat. Big stretchy boy. I mean, this is part of why a non-zero amount of people just straight up don't do garnishes, because... It doesn't add all that much. I mean, it's helpful, but it doesn't add that much. Okay, take the laziness. This is just going to get mixed into this. Which, hey, I guess I could do the smart thing. Considering where it's heading, I don't think you care too much about where, how it looks. I mean, that's fair. But that's the entire point of garnishes. It's, it's not supposed to add flavor. It's supposed to add uh, a visual change. <laughs> Come here, rice that's stuck at the bottom. Okay. <laughs> Turn off that burner so that no one dies. Yeah, just mix all of this together and it will be delicious. Just want to get everything nice and coated. Use, because we didn't completely cook out the water from the uh, rice, we'll also be adding a little bit of the starch water to this to help thicken everything up a little bit. There. It doesn't look the nicest, but look, it's beef stroganoff. It usually doesn't look the nicest. That's just what happens. It's okay. Oh, but it smells fucking great. Oh my goodness. Okay. This is going to go into some sort of container, but first, I'm going to have some for my lunch. So that I do not starve to death. Ah, and then I accidentally rest my hand above the only recently turned off burner. Yeah, look at that. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that, honestly. Plus with the soup, yeah. I'm real fucking happy with that. Boop. I'm real happy with that. Um, I don't know if this will fit in that. Might. It should. Ugh. I don't know where we got these either. We've got a whole bunch of these weird storage mediums that I don't know where we got, but the outside looks garish as all fuck, but these actually work really well because they're ceramics. So they're well insulated. And we've got like three of them. Sort of dose stuff if you want to, but this should all fit in one, honestly. Well, besides the stuff I'm eating, but yeah. Eh, I might need a second one. We'll see. Oh yeah, I could need a second one. Or I could eat more, but I shouldn't. I shouldn't. I, I just shouldn't, okay? So how, is, how does this taste? Beef's a bit tough, which kind of expecting, because that cooked for longer than I expected. And the, the basically flavorless brown rice has taken away a little bit of the flavor. So I could use some more salt and pepper, but it's pretty good. Considering that we came up with that recipe on the fly, there's plenty of things we could do to improve it, but it's pretty good. No, because the apples would just add more, like, things. We also don't have apples. Like, I already said that part. We straight up don't have any apples. The point of doing this was I didn't want to go out and buy more stuff. Because I'd already started the stream. Come here, little one. And I think this is your lid? Yes, that is totally your lid. Good. Herumph. Okay. Well, since I don't super have a way to cut over to the other screen and go like, hey, thanks all the patrons and things. I mean, I'm still going to cut to it, but actually, no, I probably won't because um, it's actually not updated yet because now we're on the, the 1st of March and someone has to come off the list, unfortunately. Um, but I can very safely say <clears throat> thank you all so very much for joining me for this stream. Uh, I will probably be going live again in like hour and a half? I did totally miss whatever you said about asparagus. Um, what did you say about asparagus? No, no. Asparagus would be a bad garnish. Because asparagus... 
Like, the, so the thing you have to think about with garnishing a soup is that you don't want to have something that has, like, significant bite to it. You want to have, like, unless this was a soup that had, like, things in it. When you're garnishing a soup, especially one that's very homogenous like this, you want to have something else that is either homogenous, like sour cream, or some sort of herbage that gives a bright color, and you can, like, thinly slice on the bias so that it is visually there, but won't impact someone just trying to drink it like a soup. If you're doing, like, asparagus, then it's just, here, have a thing in the middle of your soup. It's sort of like um, with Bloody Marys, where, and Caesars, I guess, if you wanted Caesar for some reason. Um, like, <laughs> they're infamous because people put so much shit in the garnish that you have to get through the garnish to get to the drink. Admittedly, at this point, that's kind of part of why you order one of those things, because it gives you a bunch of food to eat first, but... If you're just trying to actually get a Bloody Mary, you don't want all that garnish stuff. You want it to just be like a simple garnish, like the garnish for a martini just being a single olive or two olives on a stick that don't get in the way of the drink, but add to it a little bit. Um, but yeah, I don't know about clover leaves. Um, but yeah, thank you all so very much for joining me. I hope you all had a lot of fun. Um, I will be live again in like two-ish hours, hour and a half, sort of depends. Um, but yeah, thank you all so very much for joining me. I hope you've all had a lot of fun. I mean, I know I super did. Uh, I would like to thank all of our wonderful patrons that make this possible, especially Alifcat, because this whole setup wouldn't be a thing without Alifcat, so thank you, Alifcat, so very much. Thank you as well to Stark Maximum, Damasu, and uh, Tremor101. We couldn't do this shit without you. Thank you so very much. And if you're watching this and enjoyed what you saw here, uh, maybe consider following us on Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, all of these places where we do all the things. Um, and if you really like what we did, maybe consider helping us do it, because this is my full... Well, not cooking so much as this. The streaming thing is my full-time job. Uh, so you can help support us over on Twitch with stuff like your Twitch Prime. If you have Amazon Prime, you get a free sub that you can give out to any streamer ever. And we will all be deeply grateful for that. Um, or you can support us on Patreon, where you can help make this thing happen or get your name in the credits or that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, thank you all so very much. And I'm going to be thrown over to another streamer. I will figure who the, out who that is in a minute. But yeah, thank you all. And I'll see you hopefully in a little bit. Bye folks.